We're done. That's it. All for Sports Center. More sports coming up. The NCAA Lacrosse Championships on your way. Syracuse against Princeton. And don't forget, we have baseball for you. Memorial Day, ESPN to ESPN2. Enjoy the lacrosse. Bye. For the last two decades, Syracuse and Princeton have dominated the lacrosse world. The right to claim dynasty is now a dramatic war. A controlled game and overtime goals are the trademarks of the Tigers. While creative shooting and offensive flair have given the Orangemen an image all their own. Since 83, six championships for Syracuse and five for Princeton give them a combined 11 in 17 years. So the lacrosse millennium begins with a look that's familiar. Syracuse and Princeton are playing for it all. ESPN presents exclusive coverage of the NCAA Lacrosse Championships. Today from College Park, Maryland, it's the number three seed Princeton Tigers challenging the number one seed Syracuse Orangemen for the championship. These two teams got to the final in a very tough semifinal matchup. Syracuse had to beat a stubborn and very tough offensive Johns Hopkins team. And then Princeton beat the defending champion Virginia Cavaliers to get to the championship game. And you can see that these two teams have won 10 of the last 12 championship games. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Belsmo, joined by Quint Kasnick, four-time All-American. Quint, this is best against the best, and it's going to be a great show. Two dynasties. Syracuse known for their run-and-gun style, and Princeton, they've revolutionized the way defense is played. A contrast in styles. Let's take a look at Princeton first. We'll start with the semifinal matchup, and they really had the upset of the day. 12-11, to 11, they prevailed over the defending champions. Matt Striebel, four assists. He feeds the freshman, Sean Hartopoulos. The goaltending, so tough. Trevor Tierney, 14 saves. And then with two minutes to go, it was his brother, Brendan Tierney, with the game winner. They win 12 to 11 over Virginia. And on a team that relies on the freshman, here is the senior leadership. Well, Josh Sims, three goals in that game. He provides the majority of the offensive horsepower, 34 goals on the season, the Ivy League player of the year. Take a look at Syracuse now. They had a great defensive effort to get to the championship. They beat Johns Hopkins 14 to 12. Liam Banks and Ryan Powell, so tough on the offensive end. Mike Springer had the hat trick, but Robbie Mulligan, 14 saves, some courageous saves, and Ryan Powell, here he is with the slick finish inside for Syracuse. This game was tied at 12 apiece with about two minutes to go, shorthanded. Powell to Springer, the game winner. They win 14 to 12 and advance to the final game for the 11th time in school history. And of course, they are led by everybody's All-American on the attack end of the field. Seven goals this season in the NCAA tournament. He shoots 42% from the field. His leg strength and vision so effective on the offensive end. All right, Quint and I will be back with the start of this classic matchup, Syracuse against Princeton. How would you really like to get to know Jeff Gordon, Dan Marino, Dennis Rodman, Brett Favre, Pete Sampras, Charles Barkley? Find out why Greg Maddox wears a Mickey Mouse watch, what Mike Piazza does in bars, what kind of wrestler Tim Duncan would be. All this and more in Outtakes, a new book by Dan Patrick. Full expanded interviews from Dan's Outtakes column in ESPN the magazine take you inside the minds of today's favorite athletes. Offbeat, revealing, and fuego. Outtakes in bookstores now or through ESPN.com. Take a lap with NASCAR anytime, anywhere at NASCAR.com. Log on for the latest news up to the second standings and driver profiles. Join chat sessions with NASCAR's biggest stars. Need official NASCAR merchandise? Check out the NASCAR online store. Each week, Garage Cam shows you how your favorite team is gearing up to take the track. During the race, timing and scoring instantaneously updates every driver's position, and you can even listen to drivers and crews talk strategy. I don't know what to do to this thing. We'll work on it. Let NASCAR online and NASCAR.com put you in the driver's seat. Join host Bob Lee as he takes a hard look at the week in sports and explores the major issues surrounding athletes on the groundbreaking show that takes you inside the game by going outside the lines. Outside the Lines, the Sunday morning edition at 10.30 on ESPN.
Welcome back to ESPN's production of the NCAA Lacrosse Championships from College Park. This is the best in Division I. Leif Ellsbone, along with Quinn Kesnick, the overcast day will provide a great environment for these tremendous athletes. It's cool, 59 degrees, not much wind, overcast. The field is soft. It's rained here over the last week, but these guys will not be getting tired because of the heat. No question about that. Take a look now at the series matchup. These two teams are the best in the last 17 years. The series began in 1922. Syracuse leads 7-5. The last meeting, April 23rd, a dominating performance by Syracuse. The worst Princeton loss since 1990. These two teams met in the final game, 1992, at Franklin Field. Two overtimes. Andy Moe scored to give Princeton their first national championship. And in that year, they wore black. Since 1992, they have not put on the black jerseys. As we look at... Coach Bill Tierney, he put his team back in black, making the pull back to that moment in 92 where they had the major upset and their first championship. Princeton, five championships in the 90s. They are undefeated in the title game. Getting set for the face-off of this championship game. And it'll be number 19, Matt Baylor for Princeton, and Chris Searcy, number 46, who dominated in the semifinals. A quick move by Searcy will give the ball to Princeton. Championship game tension so evident there. Chris Searcy jumping the initial whistle. Keep your eye on Searcy today. He leads the nation with 71%. His wing play has been terrific, though, with Sam Bassett and Seglia for Syracuse. Our top is number 20. Bypasses Sims four as they move the ball around. Strebel behind will be the control player, number 30. This is Hartopoulos, number 20, who was the freshman who had five goals yesterday, or two days ago in the semifinals. Princeton will be patient on attack. They'll be very much concerned with picking the right shots. Two freshmen, Quint, join Josh Sims, the All-American number four. He gets ragged by Seglia. They're going to call a loose ball push and get it back to Josh Sims. John Desco, the head coach, Syracuse University, second season as the head coach, but he has been involved with that program as a player in the late 70s and as an assistant coach in the 80s and 90s under head coach Roy Simmons Jr. So he has been part of this dynasty and the great legacy of Syracuse lacrosse. The game plan for Princeton will be, take, will be to take a lot of minutes off the clock. They don't want to rush the patience of the Syracuse defense. They want to go ahead and take a lot of minutes. They are not a high-scoring team. Princeton will have to keep this game down around 10, 11, 12 to have a chance to win. You're hearing Mulligan bark out the signals. We have the Nets mic for you at home to hear the field generals in the net. Strebel handling behind the goal, covered by John Glatzel. 18 for Syracuse, a great one-on-one -on -one battle. Overplay on the wing, gave them a little bit of a step. Josh Sims trying to get some motion. He's double teamed, and a little bit of room. And Hartopoulos goes back to Strebel again. Hartopoulos, big left hand, but he can't get by St. George. Good stick check. Mulligan chases it on the shot. It'll be Syracuse ball. Take a look at Rob Mulligan, fourth in the nation in save percentage. To me, his clearing ability and his vocal leadership of the defense is where he stands above the majorities, a majority of the goaltenders in Division I. Great leader of his defense. He's vocal and emotional. Trevor Tierney on the other end. Maybe a little more quiet. Take a look at the keys to this game from Syracuse perspective. Chris Searcy, their face-off face, 71%. He has the muckers and the grinders on the wing. Bassett and Sigley, look at the ground balls for them. The stealth bomber, they need to get Mike Springer involved. 46 goals, 102 miles an hour on his shot. And avoid the double-decker. That is a sandwich team, which they call last year's 99 team, a team that did not win a national ring. This senior class has not won the championship either. Trevor Tierney with another great save. He had a real sensational, very strong effort in the semifinal. And that first offensive set for Syracuse, they got the ball into Coyone's hands. He made a nice move, but shot from the left-hander side with a right-handed shot. And Trevor Tierney was right there in great position. And immediately, you can see the contrast in styles. Princeton, they bring it down first possession. They work it around for over two minutes. Syracuse, they get it. It took less than 15 seconds for them to go to the goal. A shot in front, and it was blocked by Mulligan. Torney came across and got the feed from Owen Daly. He put a blistering right-handed shot that Mulligan got a piece of. Torty only three goals on the season, but he's a fast player. And I think Coach Tierney is going to have to change some of his midfielders to get more athletic and speed-oriented midfielders in the game. You saw Strebel with a little bit of a slip. Again, the field a little bit soft. Glatzel really working him hard. Glatzel has the upper hand in that matchup. 
Stay up. St. George on Hartophilus. The lefty had not much of an angle. Mulligan again brushes that one. Give him credit for a save. Here comes Glatzel. Siglia trying to pick it up cleanly and get a little transition going. Ryan Powell will settle things down, and he'll be played by Ryan Mollett, number six. Marquee matchup right here for Princeton. He moves on the finalizer. We'll talk about that in a moment, but that is his trademark move. He didn't get a great shot, but he came back with a left-handed feed. Good move by Ryan Powell initially. A push call will give it back to Princeton. Trevor Tierney, Princeton's goal, the number one save percentage in the country. A very underrated goaltender. Had a spectacular game in the semifinals and appears very calm and poised. He plays behind a spectacular defense, but I give him a lot of credit. He plays deep in the goal on his line, and he's very patient. He rarely guesses at the shot. Princeton again, slowing down. Streeble behind with Glatzel on him. St. George with Hartopolis. Great challenge for St. George with Hartopolis having five goals in the semi. Only a freshman, Hartopolis. Sims, we talked about the first midfielder as we watch Streeble. You'll see Sims, he's now in the crease. He'll play a little bit of midi, a little bit of attack. This is the second unit, Josh Sims out there. They rotate a lot of different guys through there. And number eight is Ryan O'Shaughnessy, a kid from Denver, a senior. Great talent coming out from the Denver area, O'Shaughnessy is one of them. Syracuse has Stuart Smith and Timmy Burns playing defensive midfield right now. Look for those two to try to get their transition game going. Very speedy players who like to move up the field. Big hit by Burns. He wants it on the field. Wants the ball loose. Listen to Mulligan. Mulligan wants them to be under control, obviously. He wants a stake-free defense. Syracuse has been burned this year. Five penalties, 102 penalties on the season. Josh White, big shot. Mulligan again, reading it beautifully. He's been sharp so far. Both goalies looking to be a, bringing their A game to the championship. And Quint, that is so important when you get to this day. Josh White, the left-handed freshman for Princeton, who had the big assist, the game-winning assist in the semifinals. And he loves the dodge from behind the goal. That time Mulligan read that shot the entire way, got his head down and his stick all the way down on this muddy dirt, and the ball did not squirt through. Springer has Farrell on him. Scott Farrell, number 24, but now the ball's out front. Again, Coyone working against a short stick D. He likes this matchup. Slide comes initially to get the long pole on him. Quick double team by Brian Lieberman. When we say slide, we mean a quick double or triple team from the interior of the defense. So you'll see a player that uh, doesn't like, they don't like the matchup. Tierney will call it out, and that particular time, Lieberman slipped from his man over to take the more lethal weapon in the midfield area. Pal behind with Ryan Mollett playing D. Backing him in, he's so strong. Out front to Smith, fakes a big power move. And again, Syracuse went showing control they really didn't have before John Desco took over. That ball deflected by the defender. Mollett got a stick in the passing lane. That ball rolls out of bounds. Ryan Mollett, an interesting story. Came to Princeton as a midfielder, and they switched him. Here he is containing Ryan Powell. And you can see the quick double team from the top of the screen right there. Brian Lieberman is the adjacent player, and he quickly double teams Ryan Powell. Powell loves to back in from that corner spot and feed his teammates. Got so many weapons, Power is one of them. If you're Princeton defensively, you can't let him sit there. You've got to flush him out. Devin D'Arcangelo gets it on the wing. Torty playing defense on him. Rob Torty played a lot of first midfield last year. There are two or three guys that played first midfield on Princeton that aren't on that lineup this year. Freshmen are taking over the Princeton lineup. Into the crease, it's Ryan Powell. The slide left him wide open. A great job for Syracuse to work the perimeter. It was Kaufman on the far side, I believe, who came in, drew the defense, and fed the master, Ryan Powell. Josh Kaufman, a terrific passer. 24 assists on the season. He will drive right-handed here and watch the defense. They will give him a lot of attention as he feeds inside. You can see right here, this is Powell. He's wide open as Mollett steps to help out on Kaufman, and Powell is left with the easy shot. Here is the isolation, Ryan Powell. He positions himself right in front of the goal. Catch, shoot, easy goal, tic-tac-toe for Syracuse. They're on the board first. That a guy you want to leave alone on the crease, and Princeton paid the price. They are down by one in the first quarter of this action. Championship for Division I. All-time numbers are very impressive for this guy, uh, Ryan Powell. 
Coming up on his brother, Quint. He's and really he'll do it with an average day today. He'll do it. He averages six points per game, and you can see he's reeling his brother, Casey Powell, in. Casey, they played together here for two years, but Ryan yet to win a national championship. Your Mulligan barking at defensive positions and slides. Princeton spreading everybody out. They don't want slides. They want to try to get some easy shots. And there was a shot from too far out. Easy pick up for Mulligan, who has looked very sharp. Bassett on the transition. Josh Sims trying to stay with him. Sam Bassett pushing the attack into the field, looking for help behind. Liam Banks comes out to help him. And Damian Davis, the number one defender on Liam Banks. Interesting matchup there. Yeah, they put Farrell on Mike Springer, and they're having Farrell just face guard Mike Springer. Springer stung this Princeton team with five goals in the Easter Sunday massacre. And I think that Princeton is very well aware of Springer's dominance with his shot. Again, two miles an hour. He's got over 40 goals this season. Only one senior really on the starting team for Princeton. And that's and Josh Sims. A lot of experience, four or five seniors on Syracuse. There's Liam Banks, comes in on Damian Davis. Liam Banks kept his attention on the middle of the field, getting Damian Davis to think past, and then he just wheeled with a low shot. Banks is Mr. Consistency for Syracuse, and he comes up with different ways to get involved in the scoring. Watch him here, just a strong right-handed drive. Davis is in good position, but Banks creates some separation between Davis and himself, allowing the stick to come free right there. And that gives him some range to get his hands free. He pushes, pushes, pushes. Davis is stronger, but he creates separation right there. Step away and fire the low shot from about five yards. It gives Syracuse a two nothing lead in the first quarter as Seglia picks up the loose ball and Abrams can't get it for transition. Sims with a good ragging defensive check. Keeps the ball loose. Princeton does not want to get behind early as you could expect against Syracuse. They have struggled to score in the last two meetings. Princeton has struggled to score against Syracuse. Here are the keys for Princeton. Can they continue their Memorial Day magic? 5-0 in the title game, including three overtime games. Freshman orientation, but it's been more like commencement for those freshmen. Of the 22 NCAA goals, 11 have been by freshmen. And then the last key, the tempo. They need a slow down, six on six, half field type game. Moffman back on the field with Coyone. He's had a couple shots in this game. He's getting a short stick matchup. He likes that a lot. And you'll see him work hard to get a shot. This one going wide of the mark. Ryan Powell couldn't get it the first time he attempted. This time it hits the line and it'll go back to Princeton. The primary ball handlers, it appears, for Syracuse today are going to be Ryan Powell from behind and Coyone and Kaufman from up top. Coyone had Kyle Barger working on him. Barger now has the ball, brings it down to his offensive set. Josh White comes on the far side, along with running mate Dan Clark. Artopoulos behind a streble. Pick right, Glatt, pick right, Glatt! Here Mulligan barking at the position for the pick, letting him know, warning him. Strebel loves to dish it, 55 career assists, but John Glatzel will be in his gloves behind the cage, making it very difficult for him to get free and to see the open Princeton Tigers in front of the goal. Strebel lost a great combination, mate, when P.J. Prager went down with an injury this year. He was the best finisher on Princeton's team. He has an ACL injury, his knee not quite right to get back into this game, but that was the finisher in the great combination with Strebel. He's missing him tremendously, and the numbers have gone down. Precision offense by Princeton. They've been scoreless here for about 10 minutes. They spread the team, it goes backside. That shot a little bit too tight to the net by Dan Clark, but they did exactly what they wanted. They spread the D, beat the one-on-one, -on -one, and came in with a hard shot on Mulligan. Not a great angle, and Mulligan pushes it to the net. Princeton known for their ability to pass the ball. Syracuse knows that. So they're going to stay at home on their men. Make Princeton run by you for a goal. Tim Burns coming in. Thought he had a moment to score. Now he'll reset. Chris Barrier playing defense on him. Number 28. He's been a real warrior for Bill Tierney. Number 28 now playing with a long pole on the defense. Second midfield for Syracuse in the game. Stuart Smith, Tim Burns, and Tom Hardy. Matchups so critical for Bill Tierney's Princeton team. So many weapons on the Syracuse squad as you look at them reload. Throwing out Tom Hardy, Burns, a lot of guys who can score. Little stick check, beautiful job to put the ball behind the goal. 
It runs all the way to the end. Ryan Lieberman, who also was injured in the middle of the season. Lieberman hurt, dislocated his shoulder in the Cornell game. That was the day prior to the Syracuse game, so he did not play last time these two teams met. So Lieberman now spending some time on Liam Banks. Tierney still worried about his matchups. That one goes in and finds the mark behind Tierney. So coach Bill Tierney made a switch, took Damian Davis off. He puts Lieberman on Liam Banks. Liam Banks takes him right to the cooker and gets one to dribble behind the goalie. Banks, back-to-back -back goals. He has scored in every game this season. His 35th goal of the year. He was hot in the semifinals. Three goals, three assists versus Hopkins. And he shoots about 44% from close range. He's really not known as a dodger, a guy who can penetrate, and that is surprising, this Princeton defense. They have not been comfortable yet. Princeton calls a timeout because Syracuse has it rolling. Three to nothing is the score. And I'll tell you what, all the weapons that Syracuse has, it can certainly scare you. Bill Tierney being very careful to not let this game get out of hand. Let's take a look at one of the favorite moves of Ryan Powell. He's used it to win overtime games. We're going to talk to him about his favorite move and what he calls it. I started doing that move uh, early in the season, worked on it in practice, and it's something that I really thought of uh, because of the way it was working on our defensemen. I can get the defenseman stepping over the back of the cage, and once I see his foot coming up to step over the, uh, over the back of the net, um, I'm cutting back going the other way because he still has a little time to come down on that left foot, and it's hard for him to plant right back and come the other way. And you know, I think everybody uh, mostly tries to bring their stick over the top of the defenseman, but uh, I go underneath and protect the stick with my shoulder. And Quinn, he calls it the finalizer. Take a look at it. He used it today. He used it today from behind. He loves to drive for that left shot hand. And you can see when he dodges, he bends his knees. He really gets low and uses that lower body strength. But look at his eyes. He's constantly looking up the field for his teammates. The last time these two teams played, he had a handful of assists. Six assists to really push the offensive end. Here comes Cersei off the faceoff. Springer with a cannon and a great save by Tierney. He put it on the ground. He's got tremendous speed on his shot. I thought he was going to go top shelf. That was a big time save because Springer is known as a guy who brings the heat high and hard. And that time he changed things up, but Tierney was equal to the task, sprawling in front of that cannon from Springer. Baylor gets nailed by Liam Banks, who got call, caught on the defensive end of the field. So number three, after scoring two goals unassisted, comes down, draws a penalty. He's going to give Princeton a chance to change the momentum. Banks hustling and covering up for Sam Bassett as he crosses the line. Watch the penalty. There's Banks from behind right there with the slash that's not even close to getting the stick and he piles on afterward syracuse they fouled 10 times in the semifinals they had to kill off 102 penalties this season that is a lot princeton has only fouled 58 times this year in the semifinal game against virginia they had to face this uh, tough extra man who started getting things going, but Syracuse in their semifinal match had great defense on this man down unit. Let's see what they do against Princeton. Shot from the side, you see the stick check by Glatzel, put it back to the turf. Mulligan comes out and gets it, still loose. Far side trying to push it up, and a big run by Abendroth. Abendroth with a huge ground ball right there, and the nifty handle. Springer, down low, big juke in the face. For Syracuse. They love transition. They scored shorthanded against Hopkins, a critical goal in the semis. Today, they really hurt Princeton's effort by getting their fourth goal when they are a man short. You talk about a crazy handle. Well, Abendroff made a spectacular play on the near side, kicked it to the middle of the field to Billy St. George, and look at them in transition. This is Springer. They've got a four on three down low to Kaufman. The shorthanded dip and dunk, and they score in transition. Four to nothing, shorthanded. Here's the tail end. Watch the fake inside, outside, and back up top. Kaufman, his first goal of the game. Give Abendroff, St. George, and Springer some credit for some unselfish passing. That has been the key to this offense. John Desco has really instilled a balance, a balance of pushing the tempo, taking transition, but really utilizing the passing skills, four or five passes. They can beat any defense with that. Sims comes up with the face-off. Tighten up, Billy, tighten up! Jack! Tighten up, the call hey, from the Mulligan. Martopoulos, number 20, we haven't heard from him yet. He had five goals in the semi. Scribble behind, looking for somebody to become a finisher for his feet. Tordy, back to Hartopoulos. Teams at even strength now. Syracuse runs back out. Burns now on the field. 
Princeton has yet to take a quality shot from directly in front of the goal from about 10 yards and in. Most of their shots have come from the wings. And they've empowered Mulligan. Mulligan has gotten more cocky, a little stronger, and there he is at intercepting a pass across the crease. A direct contrast from the 99 finals. If you were with us last year, you remember the first half against Virginia when Mulligan only made one save. He said he's learned from that experience. He knows that this is a 60-minute game. But I tell you, if you're Princeton, you've just given Robbie Mulligan a lot of confidence. He is full of confidence with uh, zero on the Princeton scoreboard right now. Tim Byrne brings the ball in. Offensive threat running on this midfield. With Coyone out there. Syracuse right now is beating Princeton at their own game, the half-court game, and they also are beating them in transition with that last short-handed goal. Coffin 32 has it up top and he gets it to the wing to burn. Coyone on the far side. Looking for the slide, he gets it. Back to Liam Banks, who now has Ryan Mollett on him, and he intercepts it beautifully. So they switched again to put Ryan Mollett on Banks. Bill Tierney still trying to find the right matchups. Maybe it will be Mollett, the most experienced player he has on the defensive end. Glatzel can't pick it up. Big time hit as Princeton tries to get it on the sideline. Burns can't pick it up as Baylor takes him out. They're going to call a penalty on that. Bill Tierney trying to get some composure right there. Big hit by Baylor, but the back was to him. It was on the sideline, and it has to be a from behind hit. Take a look at Baylor as Timmy Burns goes to scoop this ball. He maintains possession, and he is pushed from behind. Actually, a clear close. push from behind. Now, this is as the ball goes out of bounds. Here it is again, different angle. And then after this happens, there were some words on the sidelines, and I think Princeton got a bench violation for heckling the officials. You see Baylor in the box, and he'll be joined by a second teammate. So it should be a six on four opportunity for Syracuse. Bench foul, releasable point. Does the bench foul I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. This year, of course, this game almost getting away from Bill Tierney right now. Six or four to nothing, and he's worried about this score you see on the top of your screen. 16 to four, the worst Princeton loss since 1990. 16 to four, Michael Springer had a huge game. Five goals, Ryan Powell, six assists, Syracuse, 10 to two at half they let. You have to remember though, that was the day after Princeton clinched the Ivy League title with a big victory over Cornell. So their focus that week was on Cornell, not Syracuse. 27% is their efficiency on extra man. You've got about 38 seconds left in the quarter. You probably want to get your shot off here. And you still might get possession to start the second quarter. Springer, Cannon with a top pipe. He gets us possession. It's a great shot because if he misses the pipe, they're back there to back it up as you look at Springer. The stealth bomber is a zone buster. Again. Springer right into the stick of Tierney. Tierney was locked and loaded, waiting for it. They try to get another follow-up shot and still maintain possession. Liam Banks. Two players released, so they're all back in at even strength. The final seven seconds clicking down. I don't think Syracuse knows they're still a man up. They're, not, they're going to waste a chance to get a shot. And I'll tell you what, Syracuse threatening to blow this one away with great offense. They lead four to nothing on the strength of Liam Banks and his two unassisted goals. We'll come back with a second quarter action from College Park in just a moment. ESP in the magazine. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for calling. Dan, can I put you on hold? Dan Patrick wants a free polo fleece pullover. He writes a column for the magazine. <laughs> but he's not a new subscriber. Sorry, Dan. No can do on the fleece. It's only for new subscribers. You mean you're you're actually calling to subscribe? Okay, sure. <laughs> Everyone wants our warm, roomy Polar Fleece Pullover. It has a half-zip front, an embroidered ESP and the Magazine logo. And best of all, it's free. ESP and the Magazine. It's Rich Eisen. He's called three times. Sorry, Rich. I agree, it's a great-looking fleece, but it's only for new subscribers. Subscribe now to ESP and the Magazine and get your sports the way it ought to be. Big and bold, fast and furious. Within your face photos, amazing interviews, and behind the scenes coverage of what's happening now and what's happening next. All with ESPN Attitude. Stuart Scott wants the fleece. Booyah! 
Call now for ESPN the magazine. Get 26 issues a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. That's 66% off the newsstand price. And your fleece pullover is free. It's Chris Berman. He could go all the way! Call now for ESPN the magazine and your free fleece pullover. 1-800-491-2233. College costs money. That's why I'm getting a basketball scholarship. It's going to be hard work, but I'll get there. People say I'm too short. Too short like a fox. Oh, I have game. You may never get an athletic scholarship, but call now to find out how last year, 7 out of 10 full-time students received other kinds of aid, more than $60 billion in all. I carry these guys a little bit. You can't stop me. You can only hope to contain me. ESPN's exclusive production of the NCAA Lacrosse Championships. It's a big love fest this weekend, folks, for the lacrosse fans around the country. Bill Tierney now in a real war trying to get back in this game. Four to nothing, he's down into the first quarter. And while you were away, we had a stick check called against Hartopolis' stick. It was ruled to be illegal, which means they get a three-minute penalty, I believe, Quint. Three-minute non-releasable penalty. The sticks are checked after each quarter. Take a look at the first quarter stats. Obviously, the score. Shots about even, but you have to be impressed with Syracuse's efficiency on offense. Ground ball, 17-7. to The superior athletes. We were on the field prior to this game, and Syracuse, let me tell you, they are the biggest and fastest lacrosse team I have ever seen. And don't forget strong. They are all fit and ready to roll. And they did the same thing with Hopkins in that semifinal game. Hopkins had a great game. They missed the cage a lot, but they did not win the ground ball war against the Syracuse team. Coach Desco now looking at a three-minute man advantage. <laughs> So Princeton now shutting off Casey pa or Ryan Powell rather behind the goal. So they'll put Kyle Balger on him and they'll go five on four in front of the cage. Syracuse elects to go ahead and just take that man out of the mix. They spread the four players a little bit and they feel like they've got enough good shots out here. Huffman, Tyone up top. This is Springer with the big right hand. Princeton playing a diamond. It's open. Kaufman can't get it cleanly. They elect him to try to get it to Kaufman. And now Tierney out of the cage. Picked up by Farrell. Good job by Princeton to goad them into coming down low. And now there'll be a penalty against Syracuse with a slash call down on the clearing play. So Princeton has turned around a sure problem into a potential advantage. The interior defense for Princeton, they were playing a diamond and they collapsed on that shooter. And then Tierney sprawling behind the goal. Terrific ground ball play. And Armand Graham on the near side, 17 for Princeton, with a, with a tough pickup. It was a short hop and he made a nice catch. And the team should be even strength here for about a minute. Remember, Syracuse's foul was the foul on Princeton, excuse me, the stick foul is a three minute violation. And this will be a one minute violation against Princeton. So we'll be nine on nine for the next minute. Nine on nine. Favor Syracuse a little bit. If you get a loose ball, you get a transition goal, it just opens up the field a little bit. It opens up the field also for number four for Princeton. And that's Josh Sims with his speed and dodging ability. He's got Abrams matched up on him defensively. They're trying to get Josh Sims a little bit of room to do his magic. Abrams set to play defense, and Glatzel looking to slide behind him. Glatzel and St. George are both locked up, ready to make a big slide on Sims. I don't think John Desco wants Josh Sims to be the one to beat him. If that's going to happen today, it'll be somebody else. Combo! Pressure, Bill! They've got Harrington in there. Chris Harrington looks to the middle. Beautiful job of trying to force the inside crease to get a shot. Winship Ross. A superb recovery, though, by the far side defender. That was John Glatzel leaving his man to cover Ross inside. No! Stick check by Glatzel gets another penalty, and the ball is picked up by Seglia in the interior of that offensive set for Princeton. So they had the three-minute penalty, and they've really thrown it away by two fouls. The defense for Princeton, though, Here's and the Syracuse. defense, excellent. By St. George, he gets beat one-on-one -on -one right here. And then as the player comes to the goal, look at, we have a double team right here. And then the help, excellent help. The open man is on the backside right there. 
So good help defense by Syracuse, taking a page out of the Princeton defensive strategy, which has really revolutionized the way defense is played. John Desco credited Bill Tierney with really evolutionizing defense. Aggressive double and triple teaming. Hugh Princeton has not scored in 17 minutes. It's a real drought, but now they've got a 5-1-4. They'll have the extra. The advantage for Syracuse wiped out by those two penalties. Now one man coming in. Torty over to Josh Sims. Drops it down low. Strebles on that side. Here's Sims. Now you got a five on five game. Not normal numbers, folks, but it all started with a stick check at the quarter break. As Torty tries to get some moves on the defensive checks of Dan Stesson. Strebel has his man caught behind. Harrington now. Number 42 will take St. George way out. Again, spreading the defense of Syracuse with the aggressive slides. Abrams gets ready to slide. Ball check goes down. Sims can't pick it up cleanly. Still there. Stesson, no, St. George gets it. In rag by Josh Sims. And again, that strong defense of Syracuse really kept them from getting any great shots. Desco's gonna call a timeout on the far side. Credit Billy St. George, the aggressive stick checker known as a slugger on defense. He loves to deliver the devastating body check. That time he did it with his stick. Talk a lot about defense. And you know, Sims is going to get a lot of defensive looks. This is interior defense right here. Abrams all over him on the loose ball and St. George continuing up the field to make this play. Sims so graceful in the open field, but Billy St. George and the Syracuse defense, statistically their defenders pick up about two times more ground balls than the Princeton defense. We want to remind you that the women's softball championships are coming up on ESPN2 following this game. One o'clock today, Oklahoma, the Sooners will go against the UCLA Bruins. Division One Softball Championships today on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. This matchup takes you back to the first championship for Princeton. It was in 1992. Andy Moe popped the face off in the second overtime period. And the underdogs, Princeton in black. The identical jerseys they're wearing today, they win their first title. The numbers were orange then, they're white here, but other than that, they are the same. The first time they pulled them out of the closet since then. Back up the field of play. How about the play of Ryan Powell? He comes with a right-handed shot, gets his own rebound, and then rips it over his shoulder to beat Tierney. Now, Trevor Tierney has been excellent, but that one was almost impossible to stop. Ryan Powell with the devastating combination of strength and creativity. We're five on five. He's being covered by a shorty. You can see him lower. He drops, takes the body check, and then behind the shoulder shot. Beautiful creativity by Powell. He leaned in, knocked the defense down, and then stayed with it. Look at the tenacity. This ball is loose. He gets his eye on it and finishes over the shoulder. Nothing Tierney can do about that. Princeton needs to play tougher inside. Take the body on that man, Ryan Powell. Deceptively strong. Five to nothing to score. When you think back to the first matchup, as again, Sam Bassett. I tell you, he is a paper towel on a wet table. He gets everything that's loose. He's got 156 ground balls in the season. And now again, they settle things down. The Hartoffel is penalty, the illegal stick. Damian Davis matched up on Powell. The matchup last time, the short stick caused him to go to the goal with Bogger on him. Now, Damian Davis, very strong. Two-time state wrestling champion when he was in high school. Only a freshman has drawn the top guy on everybody's team that they have faced this year. Two passes as the defense slides, and then a shot finds the rope where the whistle had blown. Substitute. So the sideline really complaining about the referee whistle. They called an illegal substitution, but I'm only counting six Syracuse Orange on the field. They scored the goal. The whistle had blown prior, so no goal. 
Okay. It was a perfectly orchestrated offensive set. When they had the slide behind her, they moved the ball three times, and then it was just a ripping shot that hit the net behind Tierney. Beautiful passing by Syracuse. You can see Davis and Ryan Powell matched up. Davis matches up well with Powell because of the strength factor. Powell's got to use some of the quickness moves that he has. The officials talking to Coach Desco on the far side. Greg Bowen, the chief bench official. That was a tough call. So they give the ball back to Princeton, and they took the ball out of the net. Could be 6-0, now only 5. And obviously, Bill Tierney needs to keep that score in check as he tries to figure out the offensive end of the field. Torty, number one, Rob Torty. Big defensive checks in front of him by Kelly. Trying to get a little room. Gotta be, gotta be impressed with this Syracuse defense. Everyone expected a Syracuse-Virginia final. Some question whether Syracuse would be mentally ready to play this Princeton team after beating them 16 to four. They are. They are ready, they are focused, and they are disciplined on defense. This is a team that has not had a championship. Ryan Powell desperately wants one. Come sandwich teams at Syracuse. If you don't get a ring, they had a sandwich team last year. Ryan Powell swore it would not happen to him as he faced his senior year. Bale, little juke move inside, looks to the feed, but he takes the left-handed shot, and Mulligan has been perfect so far. Not a high-quality shot. Princeton having problems penetrating in front of Mulligan. Syracuse just playing tough man-to-man -to -man defense on the perimeter. They've got Abrams on Sims and Siglia, their long stick defender, number 24 for Syracuse, on Owen Daly, the freshman. Brad Dumont, another freshman on that first midfield for Princeton, who had a sensational freshman class. You're going to see these guys in playoff action for years to come. Dumont getting ragged by Siglia, the best defensive checker, but look at him come through it. Out front, trying to find line mate Owen Daly, and it just goes beyond him. Glatzel. Gets the loose ball, looks for help in the middle of the field. He's got it. Finally gets it to the middle. They'll get it inside the zone. Kelly will, and then they'll take a moment to change their lines. Awesome defense by Joe Seglia. Look at those numbers. Six times Syracuse as the number one seed. They won the championship three years in a row in the late 80s with the Gates, Zolberti, and Matty Palem, their goalie under coach Roy Simmons Jr. But Joe Seglia, double teaming with Stesson. The defense is wired right now. You can see the energy and the emotion that they're playing with. Playing a shutout right now. As Syracuse gets their offense, and the ball moving, Liam Banks. And close to Ryan Powell, and the check by Davis puts it back to the field surface. Burns, inside, Springer can't handle. Burns gets it back, looks to move it. Nobody picks him up, he shoots, and it goes just to the right of the goal. They are challenging Princeton with everything they've got. They're killing them on ground balls also. That was a two or three shot possession based on the fact that the white jerseys are just a little bigger, stronger, and faster on the loose balls. Ryan, Ryan uh, Mollett now back on Ryan Powell. This is how things started. They were switched around two or three ways. And a fairly weak shot from the outside by Spencer Wright as Desco gets a chance to really go deep in his midfields, keeping everybody fresh first half of this game. 5-0 the score, as you can see. Great defense as Ryan Powell gets decked, and that will be a penalty. Powell's going to go to the box for himself for a hold on Mollett. He is one of the fiercest four checkers or riders. Watch the hold here by Ryan Powell. Right there, he comes down, he makes the check, give Mollett some credit for holding onto that ball, and now the late hit up high as the whistle had blown a cross check by Winship Ross, so you have offsetting penalties there, but because the Princeton foul is a dead ball foul, Syracuse will have possession. Ryan Powell getting a lot of attention. Powell will jog of, off to the box right here. Hits. Exactly, he'll jog off to the box. The one weakness, or I don't know if you want to call it a weakness, but he, that is his 18th penalty of the season, and for an attackman, that is a very high number. The second leading foul getter for Syracuse is Billy St. George, and he only has nine fouls. Right, so you put that in perspective, uh, he really leads the team by far. Uh, of course, when he's not on the field, uh, you're a man short, too. It hurts your team two ways. Syracuse now playing 5-1-5 five five with Princeton, two people in the box. He'll spread it out with Liam Banks, number three, Ryan. Mollett on him. Kaufman goes behind. Now, this is a look at the sophomore attack that you're going to see next year. 
Springer, Liam Banks, Kaufman. This is your starting attack probably next year for Syracuse. By far the best sophomore class in the country. I'd have to say Princeton has the bumper crop of freshmen. But this sophomore class will be heard from down the road. Syracuse back on now. And it'll be an extra man play for 30 seconds. Now comes lumbering back out. A little bit sore. Let's see if they get it cranked up. Coyone takes it to the wing, but Springer up top. Princeton with Mollett coming out to face Kaufman. Powell wheels in, close to X, goes back toward no. Right-handed shot, passed up to Springer up top. Powell being shut off behind the goal. Boggers on him. Teams an even strength now as Princeton again has slowed the pace of the scoring machine from Syracuse. Don't forget the referees pulled one out of the net, but only one goal scored in the second quarter. There's a shot down low. Springer came up with the stick high and buries it past Trevor Tierney. One on one, the spread attack keeping the slides of Princeton to minimal effect, and Springer gets goal number six for Syracuse. Mike Springer unassisted. We talked about his ability to score from the outside, but here he just isolates against Torty. And keep your eye on the Princeton defense. They just watch Torty get burnt right here. And look, there's one, two, three, four, five defenders, and none of them help out. They just stand there and watch Springer walk in on Tierney and put that ball in the back of the net. So Princeton, a team that's known for a lot of slide packages, They'll play 15 different slide or defensive packages on you, but they are confused right now, Quint. They are not comfortable with any of the slides or the packages they've thrown out there. I think that's the struggle on the defensive end. And then, of course, you've got a real battle and a struggle on the offensive end. Three unassisted goals, two by Banks and one by Springer. Princeton now trying to get something going down here. Josh Sims, they look to him to be the leader. He is their goal leader. They're American at midfield. He'll be a three-time first-team All-American player of the year in the Ivy League. Striebel comes in from the bench, trying to get him a little bit of uh, room as Sigley picks him up. They're trying to change that matchup. They're trying to get Striebel away from John Glatzel. Sigley is not an easy matchup himself, but here he comes with a little bit of space, trying to find a slide and trying to find a feed. Striebel, a natural feeder. In close, that's a good shot. Oh, Hartopoulos got room. He caught an excellent feed from Strebo, and he just missed the target by about four inches. Hartopoulos from a severe angle. The left-hander had five semifinal goals. Billy St. George gave him an inch inside. He took advantage of it, poised and relaxed. Sean Hartopoulos playing like a senior in the playoffs. He's got two brothers playing at Duke. And he lit up the goal for five, a career day, five goals in the semifinal. Look at him coming in close. He gets the first goal of the day against Billy St. George, using a little bit of muscle. It was all flash and speed with a shot in the semis. This time he changed it up and just backed in with some muscle to get the first goal for Princeton. Hartopoulos on the far side just backing in, using his strength against Billy St. George. Here St. George goes over the top. Hartopoulos lunges in as Glatzel sprawls. Watch it. Here it is. St. George, good defense on that far side. Glatzel right here is saying, should I go, should I go? The help a little late from the middle of the field. They pulled the crease man high to create more space down low for Sean Hartopoulos. Seriously comes up with the next face off. Bassett with the ball. Bassett goes inside on Mollett. He's really running barrier hard. Smith pulls it down. Springer now sets up the attack for the Syracuse Orangemen. The first goal allowed by Syracuse just moments ago. Six to one the score now. And they'll be very comfortable, Quint, with that spread offense now. Obviously, the lead gives them a little bit of empowerment with a slow, patient offense. Spread the defense. There's a double team barrier all over them, and it causes them to throw it past Liam Banks. Great job by Princeton getting a little more comfortable now with what they're facing, and the slide was effective to make a bad pass. The offense was scoreless for 24 minutes, the first 24 minutes of this game. But the defense, they are playing a little more empowered. I think they understand their matchups and the slide package. Unfortunately, they're staring at a five-goal deficit. A lot of time left, though, and Bill Tierney knows that. He has produced miracles on the field in these championship series. Only one team since 92 has beaten Princeton. It's the 
Syracuse Orange Bowl in championship play. Working some new players Jimmy onto the field. That's why they're patient right now. Jimmy, help me! Jimmy, help me! Mulligan call out the slides. Abrams on Sims. Abrams holds them, and they'll get another extra man play. So Sims did a great job of challenging Abrams, going right to the cooker, and he drew the foul. And that is what Princeton needs. They need to dodge stronger to the goal in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's going to be a hold right there by Abrams. Nice defense. You can see the help. Four orange men converge on Sims. But good things happen when you're confident with the ball and you decide to go for the net. Hartopoulos with that unassisted goal. And now Sims draws the foul. Abrams really was going for his right hand, locking off his right hand charge. And Sims took the left-handed drive. And that was what got him inside of Abrams. Now you've got a 1-4-1 lineup with Sims up top. A chance for them to get their second goal and to climb right back into this game. A mental boost. That is well needed. They'll swing, put him right back. They'll swing out of this into a, into a, a circle and then probably a 3-3 set. Martopoulos a danger on the far side. Jake Kenny with a shot that goes wide right. There's been a Kenny brother in each of the last three championships. His brother was on Virginia last year, and of course Jake on the two before that for Princeton. Behind the goal, now they're back in even strength. Syracuse again taking this team away from effective shot. They had one nice shot by Kenny, but it was wide right. Now they're back to that six on six. There's some awkward matchups defensively here for Syracuse. And this one again goes wide right. And so Kenny twice missed the goal and had some nice looks though at trying to get a goal. Hartopoulos was matched up with Timmy Burns. He got the shot he wanted, but missed the goal. Hartopoulos was almost perfect in the semifinals as all his shots were finding the corners. So it was Kenny once and then Hartopoulos, as you mentioned, with that left-handed shot. Burns gets it back to Mulligan. Rifles it up with a fast break. Here they go, Stesson. Looks to the middle, he'll touch inside the box. And now he's pushing it for a shot. Stesson, hard shot, but an easy slide by Farrell, takes away. Ryan Powell, far side, there's another goal for Syracuse. Liam Banks just parked on the far side, but credit the great hustle of Syracuse and the vision of Ryan Powell. Dan Stesson legging the ball off a speedy player. He has not scored a goal this year, but look how aggressive he is going to the goal. You'll see Stesson, Dodges to the goal, the double team comes, the ball's loose, and Powell, 22, so quick to cover that ball. Tierney made a strategical mistake to come out and challenge Powell for that ball, and Powell makes him burn. Watch it right here. Powell comes out, scoops it up. Tierney caught out of the goal, and Banks has his hat trick. Nobody in the net once Banks cranked it up and got it past the defense. Nobody looks to the backside better, better than Ryan Powell. I have to agree with that. That's what makes him so tough. He's the most dangerous player in Division I lacrosse with the ball in his stick. Because he can back in on you, he can beat you with a great face dodge or a split dodge, or he'll just let it go from behind his shoulder, between his legs. We've seen him score. He is a tremendous athlete, but a student of the game, and he will do whatever it takes to win. And we've seen him make two big plays off of ground balls today. He was stuffed earlier, got his own rebound, the ground ball in front, put it behind his back for the goal, and then that play. Two points away from the all-time leading scorer at Syracuse, beating his brother. Inside, great play by Owen Daly. Loose ball, a little bit of an unsettled situation. Daly breaks open and gets on top of Mulligan. And now Princeton has their second goal. Only 7-2, to five, seven to two rather. That gets them back to it. You could hear Robbie Mulligan saying check because this ball was up in the air for a good period of time right there. The check by Siglia just misses. And Daly, the freshman, capitalizes. So a sloppy goal for Syracuse, their defense. Credit Daly for some hustle inside. The original pass was being made by Sims. The good defense was there, and that ball was just up in the air for a long period of time. Syracuse didn't react to it, but they didn't know where it was. Owen oh, Daly, part of three guys, one of three guys who are on this team. We talked about the freshman class from McDonough School in Baltimore, a, a team that was dominant in their senior year. They are part of the freshman class that will lead this Princeton team to its next four years of greatness. Ball goes to Princeton with a push ball. Tierney now brings it up. Five goals separate these two teams. Crucial stage right here. Those numbers indicate Princeton. 11 shots on goal, Syracuse 17. But the next two and a half minutes, if Princeton can get a goal or two. And Tourney's going to try. He's got one. Tourney makes.
Leafs in a 7-3 game, and they're on a roll. Their first two-game sequence, or two goals in a row sequence of the game. Unassisted, Torney, his fourth goal of the season. He just runs by the defense. Look at how spread out the Syracuse defense is, and he runs right to the middle of the field. Nothing Mulligan could do about that. That's the type of goals that they're going to need. They need to be more athletic at the midfield. They've scored three out of four goals, unassisted, beat your man, and go to the goal strong because Syracuse is slow to double team right now. And Quinn, they also had three goals on five shots here in the second quarter. That is dramatic. They're getting the easier shots by just hustling and breaking down the defense. Here comes St. George off the faceoff. 5-1-4, looks to Seglia. Seglia won't mind shooting from there. Bad shot, but it's backed up beautifully. Pal behind. Face dodges Damian Davis. He gets double. Now he's got Seglia. There's a foul shot, but read beautifully by Trevor Tierney. Another follow-up puts pressure on Tierney, but it goes out of bounds. Springer with the shovel shot. Pushing call on Princeton. The ball was loose. Syracuse maintains possession. Tierney with that sensational stop against Seglia. And then Syracuse, the garbage men in front. Seglia. Stuffed by Tierney, action in front. Watch Springer right here with the socks up with the shovel shot. He misses the goal and he's dumped to the turf. Ryan Powell and Damian Davis, the freshman, the greatest senior in the game against a rising star freshman, trying to get it to Kaufman far side. And it might have been Ryan Mollett who got a little stick check on that. Princeton defense went getting much more comfortable with their ability to take away the good shots. Coyone, they fake the double, barrier back to the middle. Timmy Burns, Princeton really packing it in defensively. They're picking the Syracuse midfielders up at about the 12-yard mark. Big difference between a five-goal lead and a four-goal lead as Kaufman tries to roll in. He tries to get an open shot, does one fake, and Tierney just picks it out of the air. He has done such a great job this whole weekend of waiting till the ball leaves the stick and then making the save. He's not guessing. He's ignoring the fakes is the key for Trevor Tierney. Kaufman, with the strength, just backed himself into a good spot. And Tierney... Looks like Princeton wants a timeout on the far side, but Tierney has eight saves, two in a row here that were big, keeping his team in the game. Seven to three, and again, as you look at Bill Tierney, that four-goal lead is something he can handle. The defense getting tough for Princeton. We'll come back in just a moment. Some of the hottest detectives on the street to switch antiperspirant. Degree ultra dry. Body heat activated. When your body heat rises, Degree's powerful ultra dry form releases extra protection. When the pressure is on, the heat is on. Degree kicks butt. Degree ultra dry. This impressive panorama was shot with the miraculous little elf. The elf 2, the two times zoom camera that's the world's smallest. Have you seen all the elves? Only from Canon. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, our global expertise has always been one of our greatest assets and greatest sources of pride. Of course, whatever we achieve throughout the world, we can never forget who we're achieving it for. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Championships exclusive presentation of ESPN from College Park, Maryland, the best of the best in Division One. I tell you, the fans love being here. This is a love fest, as I mentioned. There we go. ESPN loving the coverage. Thank you very much, guys. And there we go. The fans from Syracuse follow this team and bus around the country went to follow the great legacy of Syracuse. Princeton building their own in the last 12 years. And how Bill Tierney has done such a great job with this young team with their best score hurt. Still in the game, 7-3. Chance to make it now a three-goal game. Our topless up front. He's got the left-handed shot, but easily read by Mulligan. Confident outlet pass, Mulligan to Abrams. Quick release by Hartopoulos on that shot, but a shot at the goalie's feet is generally not a well-placed shot. They had a chance to really hurt the psyche of Syracuse on that. It was not really a shot that had a great chance to go in. With under 30 seconds to go, Syracuse will call a timeout. They'd love to pat it back to five if they could. So we'll take one short break here and come back for the final moments of this first half. It's a cat-and-mouse game, but Syracuse handling it front.
Cool. Good shot. Pull. 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 <laughs> Pull. Looks like Don got away from you, Hale. Really? Don't miss the Light Path Long Island Classic, July 24th through the 30th. Call Ticketmaster now. Barton's Custom Cup is for boats, campers, and recreational vehicles. For over 40 years, Barton's has been Long Island's canvas center for quality repairs and custom installations. The skilled craftsman will carefully restore your boat or camper to better than new condition. Navy and Benemy tops, enclosures, seats, carpeting, mooring covers, anything nautical. Barton's is your headquarters. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Lacrosse Championships from College Park, Maryland. Syracuse handily in front, 7-3, but this game is still up for grabs as Princeton has crawled back to really take over a little bit of offensive energy. Three goals here in the second quarter. Bill Tierney has talked all year about this young team. He has to rely on freshmen, so let's get his thoughts on his young team. A lot. You know, uh, last game against Maryland, five fresh, well, we scored five freshman goals and a sixth from a sophomore. So we're getting a lot out of our young kids. They've almost had to do that with BJ out. Uh, and so it's just, it's just uh, you know, we've thrown them into the fire and they've reacted very well. And one of them is Damian Davis, the number one defensive matchup all year long. Just a freshman, but what an athlete, Quinn. His success at Princeton has been a no-brainer. He's been a star from day one for them defensively, and he one day will probably be the best defender in the country three or four years down the road. 12 seconds left in this half. Zerke's trying to get the shot. They had a play call with a timeout. Quit, they may not even get it off. They won't. They lose the chance. Credit the Princeton defense. They got a little bit of a comfort level as the second quarter came up and unfolded. They had no goals in the first quarter. Three, all unassisted, which is not their style in the second quarter. And they are back in this game. We'll come back with our halftime from College Park in just a moment. Watch this. I learned how to do this from my kids. Three, shot! Oh, look out, look out, look out. Who is that? Height? Wow. Oh, <laughs> Ow. I knew you'd miss it. <laughs> hey, what is going on out there? You got weird neighbors. Don't you just love rookies? <laughs> Don't miss the Light Path Long Island Classic, July 24th through the 30th. Call Ticketmaster now. Hey, it's your summer job. You choose. What would you rather wear to work this summer? This or this? What would you rather bring to work this summer? This stuff or this stuff? Who would you rather work with this summer? These guys or these guys? It's your summer job. You choose. LongIslandCampJobs.com. That's LICampJobs.com. If you missed it the first time on ESPN, here's your chance to see what may have been the greatest tennis match ever. Agassi, Sampras, the Australian Open 2000. Unforgettable five set semifinal matchup. It's an instant classic that will get you warmed up for what could be a repeat at this year's French Open. Agassi, Sampras, the classic clash presented by American General tonight at seven on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC. Syracuse, 
Giant had it going great, but Princeton, as they always do, crawls back in it. Yes, they sure do, and we got uh, a lot of ball left, and we're going to have to play a little bit smarter than we did in the end of the second period. Uh, but my hat's off to them. Uh, they had to go to the goal. They did, and we didn't slide properly, and they scored. All right, John, uh, we look forward to your second half. Thank you very much, and good luck in the second half. Thank you. So John Desco giving us his thoughts as we look at the crowd here at College Park, Maryland. The best site for watching championship lacrosse. They hold all the crowd records here at Bird Stadium. Leif Elsmo along with Quint Kesnick bringing you all the action. And Quint, uh, this one looked like it could have been a blow away, but then here comes Princeton, as they always do, figuring out what they have to do with their limited roster. They've got some young guys. They're hurt a little bit, but they're back in it. You had to be impressed with the way Syracuse came out of the gate, scoring four goals immediately in the first quarter. But then Princeton, they seem to feel a little more comfortable late stages of the second quarter. Well, Quentin, let's take a break now to talk about some other fantastic athletes. They announced the All-American team. We want to take you to that right now. Let's start the attack led by Ryan Powell. The senior from Syracuse, 282 career points, 42 goals this season on 49 assists. Connor Gill, the sophomore from Virginia, the slick passer. He's a natural, intelligent, savvy lacrosse player. And Dan Denahan, the senior from Johns Hopkins, over 200 career points. Josh Sims leads the midfield. Three-time first-team selection, graceful, efficient, 34 goals in his senior season. J.J. Bear, the senior from Virginia. Last year's midfielder of the year, the heart and soul of the Virginia offense. A.J. Hogan, a three-time first-team selection, quick release, the penetrator, tough player, 27 goals in his senior season. And Mike Batista, the senior from Loyola. The senior class won over 40 games. Batista talented with the ball and without it with the outside shot. Now to the defense. Ryan Curtis first. The foundation of the Virginia defense for the past three years, a fierce competitor, uncanny ability to knock down balls. Marshall Abrams, the defenseman, the senior from Syracuse, a slick, finesse-type defender, throws checks. And Stephen Card, the tremendous, strong, tenacious one-on-one -on -one defender from Duke University. The long stick midfielder, Brian Spelina of Hofstra, a flashy checker with an aggressive attacking style. And in the goal, the drama of Jarbo. Mickey Jarbo, cat-like quickness, the acrobatic save, and ice in his veins. The senior, a two-time selection. So our congratulations to the All-Americans. Those are the first team players. And here they are again, 12 players who excel at their positions. Congratulations from everybody here at ESPN. You know, they call this championship weekend, Quint, and it's not for uh, any bad reasons. They have the semifinals on Saturday and then two championships before we bring you this championship for Division I. They are in Division II and Division III, and they have some excellent, excellent athletes. In the Division II National Finals, it was the Limestone Saints against CW Post. Limestone from Gaffney, South Carolina. They took a 3-0 lead in this game behind Nick Carlson's three goals and one assist. He would be the game MVP. It came down to the defense and stopping Benny Catone of CW Post. They did. They win 10-9. Congratulations to Limestone and their head coach, Mike Serino. In the Division III game, Middlebury and Salisbury State, a rematch of the 99 championship. Middlebury overcame a first quarter deficit. They went on a 6-1 run in the second quarter behind MVP David Seeley's five goals. They win 16-12, their first Division III National Championship. Congratulations, Coach Aaron Quinn and Middlebury. And as we go to break, we also must congratulate the women's team here at Maryland in Division I. They have won their sixth straight national championship. We'll be back to College Park in just a moment. Boy, you're sweating like crazy. You got TV cameras all over you. We asked the hottest pros under the sun to switch antiperspirant. Visible solid? What's that? Degree Invisible Solid is body heat activated with a clear difference. Right there. See, there's no white stuff. Degree works hard but never shows. You gotta be cool. Well done, Demetrius. You have passed the test of fire and the test of great strength. Now, the final test. You must eat a Wendy's Classic Triple with cheese, Biggie fries, and a drink. <laughs> Only the most heroic can finish such a large meal. <laughs> Nico, sorry, I cannot. It is too big. By Zeus, what mortal can make such a feast? A great man. His name is Dave Thomas. Man? No. He must be a god. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's Classic Triple, as close to bliss as a mortal can get. The 
surprisingly affordable Leganza from Daewoo. At less than $19,000, no other car has taken luxury this far. In any business, there can be only one priority. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we have never forgotten ours. Not surprisingly, we measure success a little differently. We asked some of the hottest detectives on the street to switch antiperspirant. Degree ultra dry. Body heat activated. When your body heat rises, Degree's powerful ultra dry form releases extra protection. When the pressure is on, the heat is on. Degree kicks butt. Degree ultra dry. We're back at championship weekend. Syracuse leads 7-3. It's halftime in the championship game. You see all the fans, the mothers, and parents of the fine Princeton team that upset the defending champion Virginia Cavaliers to get here. Quint, this is an exciting atmosphere of lacrosse. We know what it's all about, tailgating and in the crowd, but a lot of folks don't know the energy that goes on on the field. Well, the intensity and vocal warfare that goes on the field, almost as interesting as the tailgating outside, but as a goalie, I know that you're the leader of the defense, uh, and we've done a great job with our microphones taking you behind the scenes to listen in to some of the defense. All right, let's take a little look at inside the game of lacrosse. Those back riders go. Hux. Got him, Black. Good boy, get up right. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go. go. Get off. Jack. Oh, great Jack, Morris. Oh. Help him, too. We got to help. Jack, Morris, go. That was a great look at championship weekend action on the field. We'll come back and show you some highlights and stats from this game when we come back to College Park. You have the passion. We have the race. The 24th Annual Around Long Island Regatta, sponsored by Cablevision. Join this four-day adventure from Rockaway Point to the Glen Cove Breakwater in Seacliff. Enter now and you could win a one-week bareboat British Virgin Islands sailing vacation aboard a Moorings 4500 catamaran. Cablevision's Around Long Island Regatta 2000, hosted by the Seacliff Yacht Club. Call or log on to enter now. Hey, it's your summer job. You choose. What would you rather wear to work this summer? This or this? What would you rather bring to work this summer? This stuff or this stuff? Who would you rather work with this summer? These guys or these guys? It's your summer job. You choose. LongIslandCampJobs.com. That's LICampJobs.com. As an anchor, you always want that complete show. And coming up, a did you know about sports? So, Ken, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Never better. I'm, I'm great. I can go. Just let me finish, like that. You'll get him next show. Sometimes you don't have your best stuff, so you got to bring in a closer. We usually handle it like professionals. Thanks a lot. It's all part of the game. You're on. Three, two. Welcome back to Sports Center. The subject. We're back at College Park. The Syracuse Orangemen leading 7-3, but Princeton scored all three goals in the second quarter. They are back in the game. We want to remind you of the NHL coverage right here on ESPN. Stanley Cup playoffs, Dallas Stars defending their crown, their Stanley Cup win last year against the New Jersey Devils exclusive here on ESPN. Watch Brett Hall and all the stars starting tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Now we're back to the lacrosse finals here, and this is the first half action. Lee Bellsmo along with Quinn Kesnick. 
We'll talk about the Orangemen. Syracuse got it going early. Ryan Powell on an assist from Josh Coffin, 1-0. And then Liam Banks took over. Two unassisted goals, back-to-back. 3-0 Syracuse. Kaufman on the fast break. The assist from Springer and St. George. And watch the creativity. Brian Powell behind the back. They made it 5-0. Springer unassisted 6-0. They held Princeton scoreless for 24 minutes. So those are the highlights of the first half. Syracuse way up in front 5 to nothing, But now it's a 7-3 game. We have a full half left. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. Catch the hard-hitting, fast-moving, high-scoring excitement of Major League Lacrosse as the world's top players go head-to-head. -head. Casey Powell, Mark Millen, Jesse Hubbard, and many more. Call for your tickets right now at 888-4-MLL-TKX or go to MajorLeagueLacrosse.com. The pool is spotless. The water, crystal clear. The lighting is perfect. And the temperature... Romance Rekindled. Discover the enchantment of water by Hayward. We make America's number one pool water systems. See your local select Hayward builder or retailer today. All right, suckers. Ears up, minds open. Mrs. Jones is transmitting. Why are our sisters making less when they're busting their butts to the max? I'm speaking of pro women athletes. Are they playing any less hard than the fellas? Is their blood any less red? Whether it's tennis, track, or hoops, their sacrifice is the same. Yet women receive less. They deserve more. The more, the better. Free your mind and your game will follow. Can you dig it? This impressive panorama was shot with the miraculous little elf. The Elf 2, the two-time zoom camera that's the world's smallest. Have you seen all the elves? Only from Canon. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, our global expertise has always been one of our greatest assets and greatest sources of pride. Of course, whatever we achieve throughout the world, we can never forget who we're achieving it for. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Welcome back to ESPN's exclusive coverage of the Division I Lacrosse Championship game. Bill Tierney, coach of Princeton, with us now. Bill, it took you a little while to find a comfort level on both ends of the field, but you got some unassisted goals really working for you in, in quarter number two. Well, we played better, uh, Leaf. You know, it's, uh, we're playing an awfully tough team out here. Uh, you know, I thought we uh, kind of hung in there early, and they got a couple of quick wins, which they always do. But then the kids uh, played a better second quarter, and hopefully we can continue that. Well, thanks for joining us, and good luck in the second half. Thank you. So Bill Tierney, of course, uh, working off some strong second quarter numbers. These are the halftime stats. Quint, go through them for us. You can look at the saves, the highlighted feature there. Saves eight for Trevor Tierney, only four for Mulligan. Princeton shot the ball much better in the late stages of the second quarter. But the main differential in this game, the ground balls, 31 for Syracuse, only 13 for Princeton. Princeton, they have to get involved in the middle sections of the field, generating more possessions. They can't afford to play defense as much as they did in the first half. It'll be a critical third quarter as you look at the fans get charged up for the second half. Seven to three, a four goal lead, and Quentin Lacrosse, three goals, you feel like you're back in it. Four is starting to get away from you. Princeton in the semifinals overcame a three goal deficit. These are some highlights from the first half. That's the freshman. Owen Daly scored to make it 7-2. And then Rob Torty scored his fourth goal of the season, unassisted. We talked about how the Syracuse defense got caught on their heels a bit there, late stages, three unassisted goals. And I think they'll need more of those type of goals. They can only ask Trevor Tierney to do so much. They need to get more repetitions, get the ball to Josh Sims, let him isolate one-on-one, -on -one, draw some fouls, get some shots. That will open things up for the other players. Striebel from behind the net has really been throttled. So it'll be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, look probably for Princeton if they continue the effectiveness they had in the second quarter. This is Bassett again, the vacuum cleaner off of Searcy's face-off. They are so strong, but look at St. George immediately in trouble. The good ride of Striebel almost took the ball away from him. St. George across the field, giving it to Ryan Powell. Ryan Powell energized with the thought of getting his first championship ring. 
Damian Davis playing defense. Tried to get the finalizer, couldn't get his foot up. Davis all over it. Ryan Powell trying to start off the quarter with a finalizer and could not get the best of Davis. The freshman holding his own against the senior. Davis, a physical specimen, 6'2", 200 pounds, quick feet, and smart, intelligent position player. Dione out front gives the ball to Kaufman, two explosive shooters, joined by Devin Darkangelo. All three of these guys can put the ball in the net. Dione, this is though Kaufman trying to look for Coyone in the middle. Banks to Springer. Farrell working on him. Springer big and strong. Inside, he'll have a shot. Dismisses, backed up by Liam Banks, and he's got rope. Four goals for Liam Banks. The sharpshooter, Liam Banks, on the far side. Springer taking his game to a new level, known as a time and room shooter. He just feels empowered to go to the net. Here he is running through Farrell. I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass. Regardless, Banks was there on the backside. Here it is. Watch. He de defeats his man here. You'll see Banks sneak in to that space on the far side. He fills the space, and with a very little angle, the quick release beats Tierney to the post. Springer and Banks. Banks has four. Springer with that assist. Banks has been the story, and Ryan Powell distributing down the offensive end, and again on the faceoff. Searcy to Bassett. They've done it all year. Nobody has been able to slow them down. So incredible to get that quick possession after you score. It really wears out a defense. It's Chris Searcy and company, because Bassett and Seglia they have scooped up over 200 ground balls. Farrell on Springer. Liam Banks, number three, with Ryan Mollett on him now. They keep shifting some of the matchups down this end of the field. Tim Burns to running makes Stuart Smith. This is Burns here. The greatest Tom Hardy, Hardy making a move up top. He's got the matchup with Kyle Bogger. The midfield for Syracuse, they've only scored one goal. Remember, Josh Kaufman, the only midfielder, and when he scored, he was really in an attack position off that fast break. Burns tries to draw the double. He does. He gets Lieberman way up top, and Lieberman does a great job of getting the ball on the ground, but backed up by Hardy. Bogger stayed off of the challenge, and Hardy got it easily. In close, bouncing wide by Ryan Powell. Picked up by Mollett. No, this is Farrell. Farrell looks far side to get Lieberman the ball. He does. Hardy presents a problem to him. Lieberman will be pressured here. Lieberman, the freshman who wasn't starting at the beginning of the year when this team was beaten by Virginia. They found him shortly afterwards, and Burns gets the loose ball. Here they go. They'll look to get unsettled. They act numbers. Far side. Hardy back to Banks again. The dip and dunk. He's got five goals. Transition will really hurt you if you give Syracuse the chance to run and gun. Back-to-back -back goals. It started with the Lieberman turnover. Princeton's attack needed to help Brian Lieberman out. They get it up the field in the five-on-four. Hardy somehow finds Banks on the near side. Five goals, and Liam Banks has not missed a goal. Beautiful no-look pass through the defense. Farrell caught upfield. Failed to see that Banks was just cherry-picking behind the defense. They convert and transition. Two in a row for Banks. Five goals for that man right there. And there's the cheering section. They know where the money is. The money's in the Banks. And, folks, he's been putting the ball in the net all day long. Again, Searcy gets it out to the wing, and Bassett brings it down. It's almost... Scary, the efficiency they have on their face-offs. It's really scary because Princeton knows exactly what Searcy and Bassett are trying to do, and yet they can't shut him off. You know that wing player is responsible for making sure that Sam Bassett doesn't get the ball. The fact that he can come in the wing and scoop it is really amazing. 156 ground balls coming into this game. A dramatic number, folks. The only one in triple digits on the team, and he's well into that at 156. Again, Syracuse lining up their offensive arsenal. Coyone, Kaufman on the near side, who'll be probably playing attack next year. We talked about that. Torty playing tough defense on him. Coyone launches one, and Trevor Tierney, when he's had a chance to see the ball all weekend long, he's, been made, the, he's made the sensational saves. He'll make the ones he can see. You've got to beat him in transition. A well-placed shot by Coyone, but Tierney back on this line. He's not getting fooled. He's seen the ball, and with those quick hands, he snags that ball out of the corner. Strebel 
Going behind the goal, Hartopoulos. Said you got it, Bill. That's Billy St. George and Mulligan barking out the signals of the slack. The first solid possession for Princeton in the second half, and we've almost played five minutes. Mulligan really surveying the whole defense, making sure he likes the matchups. Syracuse empowered by the goals that started this half of play. Two by Banks. Banks has scored three in a row if you count the last one of the first half for his team. Syracuse has started each quarter in this game with runs. Four goal first quarter, two goals in a row to start the second quarter, now two in a row to start the second half. O'Shaughnessy tried to get it back to Strabel and he was pancaked by the Syracuse defense. Four on three going this way. They love transition. They could not get it to Stetson's stick. Stetson may be looking up a little bit because he knew he had some numbers. Ball goes out of bounds and Princeton will get possession. That is textbook Syracuse. Desco saying come down. How about the big time hit on O'Shaughnessy? A senior that'll be leaving this team. One of only two seniors that are getting really regular time on this rotation. Sims, they rely on, of course, as the three-time first-team All-American. And then O'Shaughnessy from Denver. Princeton coming down now. A little bit more urgency in their step. Hartoffelis back to Strebel, and Glatzel's got him measured. Dan Clark's got a great right-handed shot. Hartoffelis, no threat from back there, looks to the middle. They're really staying a little bit wide. Quint, this probably won't get it done with a six-goal deficit. They're looking inside to the stack of players in front of the goal. Josh Sims. Pipe shot, beautiful job by Dan Clark. He got the little one-on-one -on -one going, and he beat Mulligan to the stick side. And Mulligan was very fortunate that that post was there. He never picked this ball up out of the shooter's stick. There's Clark, right-handed move. Keep your eye on the ball as it rattles off the post. Mulligan just late to get on that. I didn't realize how close Clark was, though. He had gained leverage to about eight yards, so that was a pretty good shot opportunity by Clark. Yeah, it really was a nice offensive set, reminiscent of that second quarter when they had some one-on-ones, got the shots. They really took advantage of a couple unsettled situations, too, where they broke down the defense. As a goalie, in that situation, you think the shooter's going to shoot for the far post. And when they bring it back to the near side, sometimes you can, can be confused. And Mulligan really didn't seem smooth on that save. Especially as a lefty, he threw it about four inches from a stick and almost got it in there. Syracuse. Bogger playing defense. Watch the Princeton defense, how they pack it inside. They're inside about a 12-yard perimeter in front of their goalie, Trevor Tierney. Tom Hardy gets behind the lead Banks, has Ryan Mollen on him. Now Farrell playing defense behind on Springer. Farrell played last year with his brother on the defense of Sarah, or Princeton, rather. He wound up for that one, but Barrier came in to double-team. Jump shot by Springer. I want to remind everybody that we've got an exclusive tonight, 6.30, an exclusive with Bobby Knight. It's Tuesday, I'm sorry, at 6.30. Exclusive with Bobby Knight at Assembly Hall. Don't miss that on Sports Center. 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, Bobby Knight at Assembly Hall with Digger Phelps and Roy Firestone on ESPN. Meanwhile, back on the field, Liam Banks picks up the loose ball. Up top, watch out, trouble with Timmy Burns and Trevor Tierney again read it perfectly. Banks saying, slow down, calm down. Hey, Trevor Tierney has been sensational when he gets a chance to see the ball. He is in. He waits for it to come out of the stick, and then he goes right to where the location is. Very tough to beat with time. There's a hard shot with velocity, and this one, no chance for Trevor Tierney. You talk about the cannon shot, and Quint, this guy has more velocity than anybody on the Syracuse team. He is as imposing of a shooter as I have ever seen in this game. 6'3", 210. Watch him position himself right here. With the time and room, Princeton's defense steps upfield. Springer can set his feet and unleash the stealth bomber. Here it is from close range. And you really have to feel for Trevor Tierney. These Syracuse goals have all been within about an eight yard to five yard radius. 10 to three to score, a seven goal lead. It's falling apart for Princeton. An overachieving team that beat the defending champions in the semifinal game. Nobody thought they would, even though they were the third seed, Virginia was the second. 
People were planning to watch the rematch of last year's game. Well, Princeton ruined that with a just a perfectly played game. Watch out in front. Syracuse again with a rocket to the right-handed side with Chris Searcy getting one of his few shots. This is the coach's wife, Helen Tierney, on the sideline. She really has a lot going on. You've got two of your sons playing, and, of course, your husband going for the national champion. There is Trevor. And on the offensive end, Brendan, number two. Go. I haven't seen a lot of Brendan, even though he had the winning shot in the uh, semifinal game. He has not had a lot of field time today. Off the pipe with this one. Kaufman with just a laser shot to the left of Tierney. Kaufman, the heir apparent in this program. He'll be their go-to guy on the offense next season when Ryan Powell leaves. There's Kaufman slipping a little bit, backed up by Banks. Banks, talk about overachievers. Look at this guy. Not the biggest, not the fastest, not the best offensive stick skills, but he is a champion in every sense of the world with five goals on the day. And he complements the rest of the Syracuse offense so well. His intelligence around the goal, he realizes that Springer's the shooter, Powell's the playmaker. Somewhere he needs to fit you know, his skills in between them, and he has done a fabulous job. Two players on this team. There's the younger Tierney now, Brendan Tierney, number two. As people get to behind, so he hadn't had a lot of playing time, but now he's on there. They're trying to shake it up and get a little something going. Lee St. George will play Brendan Tierney as Strebel starts behind. Glatzel's done a nice job containing Strebel. Get over there. Good, Danny. Get over. Danny Clark working from behind. Big shot by Tierney. They got one up top, but St. George put the stick in his face and took away a lot of the effectiveness. St. George was late getting there. He was staring at the ball. But Mulligan, being a left-hander, there really helped him. His stick was to the wide side of the goal. Glatzel forces it inside. Great feed and an even better save by Tierney. Glatzel found Springer with a backhanded feed. And he's still down there working the ball. Put it right in front of Springer, Quinn. He had to catch it back in it and then immediately redirect it toward the goal. And Tierney still was quick enough to make the block. Springer with the quick, quick hands just redirected that pass. And somehow Trevor Tierney followed that the entire way. Five and a half left in the third quarter. Seven goals separating these two teams. Unusual in this championship series. We've seen some great ones over the years. And if it's going to be a one-goal game, you better watch out because Princeton normally wins those. Syracuse very intent on making sure the margin stays wide. Princeton appears to be packing it in a zone defense. Cat and mouse with the hero of the day, Liam Banks. The defense Farrell was caught on the front side. Liam Banks waited, waited, and then drove left to get his sixth goal. Again, a little dip and dunk. He's got such a crafty shot. Banks and Farrell, cat and mouse game behind the goal. Banks just beats him to the post and beats Tierney from close range. Six goals for Liam Banks. Farrell caught between the post and Banks. I'm surprised Farrell went to the left. A lot of times you can sit back there for a long time. It's almost better to wait before you make a commitment. Farrell committed left to his left, which made Banks uh, have an easy target on the other side. Martophilus picks up the face off. Finally, Princeton gets one off the draw. Liam Banks is with win one goal of tying Mike French of Cornell in 1976. Mike French scored seven goals in a championship game. Right now, he's tied for second with Jeff Cook and Al Rimmer. In this day for him, odds on favor to be the MVP of this game. With all the focus on Ryan Powell, you knew somebody had a chance to step up. Springer gets all the attention with his hard shot. Here's Liam Banks doing everything perfectly to build an eight-goal lead for his team. Pushing it in close to check. Here's Sims, and he finds the net. Great play by Sims. The ball went through the intended target, but Sims was there to pick it up, and he didn't waste any time putting it back off stick side on Mulligan. Josh Sims. This ball will trickle through the defense to Sims. Precision, accuracy, well placed. Nearly an impossible save from Mulligan. Sims about 32% from the field. A three-time first-team All-American selection. He gets on the board, his first goal of the game. Here it is, again, the ball will just trickle through. There's no defense, watch him plant his feet, straight overhand. You can't ask for better location than that last shot. 
It was great, and he stops a 4-0 run. But here comes Siglia off the faceoff. Again, Searcy doing a great job with that wing play. This time it was Siglia. Most often you'll see Bassett come down there, number 28, and get it. Ryan Mollett matched up on Banks. He's been a problem all day. You've got to love the energy that Joe Seglia brings to this sport. He lets it hang out on every single play. Like a little bit of a zone defense here, Princeton, just trying to keep Syracuse out. You have to, you've got to flush Ryan Powell. I mean, you can't let him sit and feed. He'll eat you apart. Well, they did a great job of squeezing him from both sides. Mollett came one side, Damian Davis came from the other. Mollett, or, uh, Ryan Powell had to turn very quickly, and he overthrows the intended target. It goes back to Princeton. You've got to flush him out. I've seen Powell have seven assists against the Loyola team that tried to use the same type of zone defense. He'll sit back there behind the goal and just pick you apart. Syracuse, they'll get into their cutting game, and Banks will cut the crease. Springer will play on the wing. Flush him out with one player and play a zone behind that. Pretty gutsy for Princeton to even think about his zone. You're down by seven goals. Trying to slow the juggernaut offensive of Syracuse. Timmy, go with him, Tim. Tierney, a little pressure. Liam Banks really riding hard. Bump, bump, Brad bump. Dumont, bump. young freshman on the first midfield with Sips most of the year. Dumont and Daly. They're in the mold of a Josh Sims. They're out of a Maryland private schools. Good speed, nice size. Dumont's a little banged up right now, playing with a sore hand. Dumont's a little banged up right now, playing with a sore hamstring. He's not at 100%. When he is, he can go to the goal for himself. Smithfield has Ryan O'Shaughnessy in there as they try to put Sims on a tag. Sims in the middle, asking for the ball. There's a shot from the wing, Owen Daly. Just putting all his body behind that one. They've got Sims in the middle working from the attack position, number four, drawing a lot of attention. That's Daly, the freshman. This is Hartopoulos, who would rather finish than carry. Oh, Billy Adams, Look at the pickoff by Timmy Burns. Just gets right in front of the offensive player, and Burns has some numbers. Looks for Springer far side, and then goes right back to Tierney. Tierney now can start his own fast break. Gives it to Sims, who came down to play defense. Sims goes through two. He'll have some number advantage of his own. Syracuse quick, though, to shut off Sims. Make them get back in their wide spread offense. It all started with Brad Dumont getting the ball picked off by Timmy Burns. And Burns there trying to really rag Dumont. Dumont comes in and gets a shot. Burns is gassed after sprinting 80 yards upfield and then 80 yards back. Good look at Dumont. Talked about him being one of the freshman stars. Dumont and Daly, you're looking at Daly right now, dislodged three guys that were on the first midfield for various reasons last year. They're now in the second midfield. Guys like Torty who have been there and they're very solid players. They were losing their position to the young talent of a Dumont and a Daly. This Princeton team redesigned by that man right there, Bill Tierney. He created this program 1988. He was an assistant at Hopkins, took the Princeton program over. Said five years, I'll get you in the championship. He delivered. He delivered 1992, 94, 96, 97, and 98. And that's his son in goal. First year they were last in the Ivy League, and they just stepped up each year. They've been first or tied for first, maybe no worse than second for the last 12 years. They've won 31 straight Ivy League games. The score now, though, 11 to 4. A little bit indicative of the giant killing that they did in the semifinals, beating the defending champion Virginia team. Everybody wanted that matchup. Well, Princeton had other thoughts. Virginia had beaten them soundly earlier in the season. What a job Bill Tierney did to have his team just control the entire game. Never got to with the, uh, with more of a three-goal margin between them and Princeton. But right now, he's got Syracuse to contend with, and Springer with a little backhanded shot. But the defense is all over. Look at Princeton swarming the ball. Farrell, Damian Davis. But Liam Banks tries to cut off the angle and does. Davis, great athletic ability, gets around two. Now, Banks again calls problems. Davis to Strebel. Less than a minute in this third quarter. Seven goals separate the teams. Josh Sims pushing in, and he'll draw the foul. 
And that'll be the second holding violation against Marshall Abrams. And there's some disbelieving Syracuse defenders, including Robbie Mulligan. Sims sensing the urgency of every possession with 34 seconds to go here in the third. Striebel will kick it behind the goal. Sims puts the afterburners on and the hooking violation by Abrams. Sims uh, held his stick a little right there to help the officials with that call. Made it an easy call for the refs. Sims has been getting the motion to his left. It looks like they're overplaying his right. He's been beating uh, the defenders. Abrams and all the guys are really taking away his right-handed drive. That's what they fear most. And he's had a lane to the goal with his left hand. 0 for 3, the Princeton extra man. Oh, good stick check to put it down on the turf by Jay Abendroff. Harrington to Strebel. Backside is open. There it is. Into the middle. There's a shot and a goal. Tierney comes up with a big goal. Brendan Tierney gets goal number five for the Princeton Tigers. Brendan Tierney from Harrington from Sims. Princeton starts this formation with two players behind the goal. They rotate up into a 3-3 set. Sims down low to Harrington, kicks it inside. Brendan Tierney, that is a replica of a goal they scored late stages of their semifinal upset over the University of Virginia. Brendan, Brendan Tierney, Tierney making it happen on the inside. High percentage shooter from close range. Athlete of the decade for Mercer County in New Jersey. According to uh, that area, pretty strong player. And he's showing his worth right here. Bassett, hard shot right into the stick of a wave Trevor Tierney. Sims with transition as time winds down. So that's why Bats cranked it up, folks. No time left, and he put intense pressure on this man, Josh Sims. He has assisted and scored in the last two goals of the game to put Princeton within six. Can they come back against the great offense of the Syracuse Orangemen? Come back, find out. All right, suckers, ears up, minds open. Mrs. Jones is transmitting. Why are our sisters making less when they're busting their butts to the max? I'm speaking of pro women athletes. Are they playing any less hard than the fellas? Is their blood any less red? Whether it's tennis, track, or hoops, their sacrifice is the same. Yet women receive less. They deserve more. The more, the better. Free your mind and your game will follow. Can you dig it? How do you measure success? Presenting iChoice from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. A dynamic new financial program that lets you achieve your success your way. How do you measure success? At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Ugh, I'm blue in the muscle issues. This will make you feel good. Hey! Mercy. That's Bruce, baby. Party at the county jail. Jane Brown was there and he began to work. Willie Nelson sliding on his own six string. Coolio was dropping our hip hop thing. Let's rock. Uh, everybody, let's rock. That's right. Everybody yeah. Yeah. in the wholesale block. Who was dancing to the jailhouse rock? Here's some food for thought. A little bit of guidance from the citizenship. Through sports alliance. When you're on the field, keep one thing in check. Be a good sport and focus, focus on, on respect. respect. Respect? That's right, ain't it a trip? It's all about teamwork and sportsmanship. When you're on the court, use your intellect and be a good sport. Focus on respect. I'm Sad Dempsey, president of the NCAA, and I want you to focus on respect. The fans from upstate New York rooting on the Syracuse team. They love ESPN's exclusive coverage of the championship. And last year, Quint, it was a different story for Syracuse. The Virginia Cavaliers, with an explosive first half, Drew McKnight and Connor Gill, too much for the Syracuse team to handle. Virginia wins the championship in 99, but Syracuse is back in 2000. Fans are all over it. They bust down here and follow religiously this team around. They love the Syracuse Orangemen's run and gun style. Numbers through three. Third quarter numbers, Trevor Tierney, 13 saves. Mulligan only tested five times. Ground balls, look at that domination by the Syracuse midfielders, 45.
five ground balls. Important possessions on the faceoff for Princeton. They've got to get the ball in their stick to make up six goals and then figure out how to beat the great defense of the Syracuse team. Fourth quarter has not been kind over the year to Princeton. Take a look at the one through three today. 4-0 in the first, of course, that was the big margin. Play them evenly in the second, that was their big moment. And then the third was so critical, but Syracuse beats them in the third. And again, throughout this year, at least, when the fourth quarter has not been good to Princeton. No, it has well. Leah Banks, far side, fake, a little motion. Ryan Powell faked a shot. Syrac Syracuse in an offensive circle here, spreading things out a bit. Princeton in black, of course, Syracuse in the white with the blue shorts. D'Arcangelo coming in, They're definitely taking some time off the clock. This is something that Princeton would do in a second. Hard to stop shooting, right? Ryan Powell, three points away, I believe, from beating his brother as the all-time leading scorer at Syracuse University. But still, for the good of the win, pulling back. He's coming in now, and a shot, and he gets the goal. Ryan Powell gets his second of the day. They worked it, it's his third of the day. They worked it two or three times to him. Finally, Quint, after faking twice, he brings it in and cans it. Powell on an assist from Banks. The isolation, low to high. Tierney went down to his knees. Powell elevates to the top shelf. His third goal of the game is 45th of the season. Consensus first team All-American and perhaps the player of the year. I certainly think he deserves it. He is one away from catching his brother atop the Syracuse all-time leaderboard. Well, Casey Powell is here, trying to glance at the crowd to find him, but uh, you know he feels good about it either way. His brother has been such an inspirational leader for the Syracuse team, picking up the number 22, which has become a fabled number at Syracuse, worn first by and made famous by Gary Gate, and then Charlie Lockwood. Everybody who picked up that number had to live up to its stature. Casey did it and in his junior year after Casey left. Ryan Powell asked for number 22. Leah Banks and big pressure by Balker. Smith on the crease. Powell behind. Syracuse making Princeton extend their defense. And a lot of rotation makes it tough for Princeton to log on to which slides coming from where. Springer big fake. Dishes down below, Liam Banks goes with Farrell's pressure to well past the goal line extended. Syracuse, a well-designed offense today. John Desco, the head coach, giving a lot of credit to Kevin Donahue, the assistant, and Roy Simmons the third for his work. Well, he said Roy Simmons the third really is the one who given, has really brought the zone into this and the different look and the different slide packages. It was always Desco's defense, and Desco is a man-to-man -man guy. Their ability to score against this Princeton defense was questioned in the mid-90s. They've really figured it out. Of course, with the great teams they've had, offense was always talked about. But if you look at the great teams that won championships, they always had an impressive pack of defensive players and a pretty exceptional goalie back there to back them up. Syracuse again, making Princeton get more aggressive. They're going to make Princeton extend the defense, and then they will take their punch at the goal. Right there's a shot. Tierney saves him. And Farrell gets the loose ball. Smith drags him. A well-designed play by Syracuse. Tierney got his butt end. He made that save with his left hand. Terrific. Farrell had Tierney inside, but Smith backed it up. And good job by Tierney to run out the shot. He's closest to that shot, so the ball will stay in Princeton's end. Nice look by Farrell. He really put some pressure on the defensive end of Syracuse. Held the ball the whole way. Mulligan working the officials. Ball back in Josh Sims' stick. This is their first team All-America three years in a row. Oh, Owen Daly had a shot from from behind. Timmy Burns puts the check on him. A little bit slow reacting. If Owen Daly was moving with that speed, he would have had tough pressure. A legal procedure against Princeton. There was some slashing going on in that last melee in front of the 
Syracuse goal. I hope Bill Tierney's ticker is healthy because I'm telling you, he is worked up. Both sides now. A late substitution on the far side. That's the second call that has gone against Syracuse out of the box. Let me tell you, there are plenty of substitutions in this game, over 400 per game. It's gotten to be pretty much a six on six game. The transition slowed down a little bit by the specialization of the game of lacrosse. Brinson now with a chance to try to get some of these goals back. Ryan O'Shaughnessy gets it behind a Strebel. O'Shaughnessy with Smith, the short stick on him. They like that matchup. Daly gets it over to Dumont. Dumont, nice juke move inside. He'll have a shot, right-handed shot, and an arm save. Mulligan just punched it with his fist to take it wide. Dumont with the penetration. Mulligan rising to the occasion. Six saves. Most of the Princeton shots have been from close range lately. They took some outside shots in the first quarter. Not well-directed shots. That last one from Dumont was well-placed. O'Shaughnessy well, again will lock up on that short stick defense and try to get a good shot. That one goes in, but beautifully placed off stick shot. Mulligan had it red, and he is feeling pretty confident and playing that way. Play St. George. Working with Abrams. And now Syracuse with only 10 minutes left in this game. A chance to get their seventh championship. Delayed call coming up against Princeton and offsides violation. 30 seconds. We'll see, we will see the Syracuse extra man. Ryan Powell one point away from tying his brother Casey atop the Syracuse all-time scoring list. And Liam Banks, six goals, one assist. He is one goal away from an all-time all final immortality. All -time. Tying Mike French with seven goals, a great shooter from Cornell in the 70s. Six on five now for Syracuse. They'll have the opportunity to take a few clicks off the clock before they Try to get it past Tierney. Working it down to Liam Banks, but the ball was knocked out of bounds beautifully by Armand Graham. Take a look at uh, what Ryan Powell says about coming to this school. He had specific goals in mind. When I signed my letter to come to Syracuse University, you know, that was my goal, was to win a national championship, and that's been on my mind and, and pushed me every day that I went out to practice. Uh, but uh, my, my fingers are still bare that ring, and you know that's what I'm shooting for, and, and that's why we're back in college park again this year. So the thoughts of the leader of the Syracuse team in his final game as a collegiate player, following the footsteps, the big footsteps of his brother Casey, a chance to eclipse him, no worse than one two in all time scoring list, and that is pretty impressive. And he has grown into his greatness. When he was a freshman and a sophomore, he was willing to step back and allow his brother to dominate the games. Princeton with a hard shot. Can't get it to go. Dan Clark put it on Mulligan. Look at the ground ball work by Glatzel. Ground ball's dominated by Syracuse to Quint. Normally, that'll get you a W. And it's their long stick player scooping up so many of them. Dish inside. Powell's got a chance for one, but he rips it off the pipe. Peppered the pipe on the pass from Seglia. Peter Piper was there too. Incredible push, and Tierney just stood his ground. Torty on the offensive end. You know, opposing teams will hate to know it, but guess what? Next year at Syracuse, the third Powell brother is set to start his career. Mike Powell, 5'8", 160 pounds of quickness breaking moves. He was a senior at Carthage High School, which is very upstate New York. It's way up there. They didn't, they didn't play lacrosse when he first started. He was the only one in town with a stick, Casey said. Now they are all trying to be the next Casey Powell. You want white backslash the ball. Two, one, this program. One minute, personal foul. Foul on Syracuse. Timmy Burns, a backslash, one minute violation. Looking at Ryan Powell right now, though, as he gets to celebrate this moment. Normally, these championship games are a lot closer, 
Syracuse, of course, has been in many close ones. Last year, a two-goal loss to Virginia. The chance to have a seven-goal lead with 7.50 left, Quint, is a moment you want to really savor. Extra man for Princeton. They've scored one goal in four attempts. Syracuse shutting off Josh Sims. Top of the box. A pair of fours. Dan Stesson has shut him off. Everybody practices on the shutoff because it's the defense du jour this year. Our top list in the middle. Kenny takes the shot and sticks side on the left-hander. And he just picks it right out of the air. Trying to get to Stesson, who was locked up on Josh Sims. Stesson can't get it cleanly. Sims wants a piece of him. Stesson finally comes up with possession and give it to Springer. Mulligan, razor sharp. Knowing that Kenny has that outside shot, he was ready. He saw it the whole way. Not only did he make the save, he caught it. Eight saves from Mulligan, three here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Powell working on Damian Davis. Kayoni. Great career he has had. We haven't talked about him much tonight, but he's gotten a lot of attention defensively. A sensational midfielder playing his last game, Matt Kayoni. Matt Kayoni, versatile, a player who improved drastically. Look at Ryan Powell trying to pull his way into the all-time record. Liam Banks following up, looking for Powell. Fishes it into him, but they can't get it. He was double teamed. They still tried to force it in. Referee being pleaded to by Ryan Powell, saying, look, that was being hammered. But it was good defense by Princeton. Ball was out of bounds on Princeton, so Syracuse will maintain possession. Banks got clobbered in the head, was looking for the call, lobbied the officials. The double team on Powell, the only way you can stop him. Far side, Mollett with the cross check. Still got the shot up and a good save by Tierney, kept it there, but watch him back into the crease. If that continued, he still put pressure on the team. And here they are back to a six-on-six -six situation. Princeton's going to have to gamble, Quinn. They've got to come out and extend themselves and challenge the ball. Springer's underneath. Ryan Bauman picks it out of the air, gives it to Damian Davis, or gives him a chance to pick it off the turf. He does. Great play by Mollett. Brings it up, looking, looking for distribution. They're shutting off Sims again. This Princeton defense is going to be a handful next year. They return all three starters. Mollett will be a senior, Davis a sophomore, and Scott Farrell. They're coming together as a unit, and Trevor Tierney will be back in the goal. So well, what a great job they did this year. They graduated everybody last year. They graduated three Harrington. senior All-Americans. They graduated their goalie. Tremendous defense, one of the best ever, and they all graduated. Kurt Luckenheimer of that team, a four-year starter for Princeton. He's the defensive coordinator this year, only 22 years old. Bill Tierney only has high praise for what he has done with this defense. Brendan Tierney gets a little smack from behind by Billy St. George. St. George padding his numbers of the as the leading Fowler on the defense. Nine penalties for seven minutes coming into this game. St. George has that killer instinct and the timing that you need to be a hitter in this sport. The ball's loose. Watch him move up field. Tierney didn't turn, so that's a push from behind. Had Tierney turned quickly, St. George would have leveled him. St. George got great experience last year, starting the whole season, mostly because Glatzel was ineligible for the whole year, but it gave him great experience. It makes this year's defense extra special. Back right. They've got to not waste much time. Tierney with a good shot. The play worked perfectly, but Mulligan got one of his legs on it. Good save. Sims picks it up in midfield. He'll dish or he'll take it to the cooker. Evan Droth trying to put something on him, and the double team from Abrams takes the shot wide. But Sims trying to do it all himself. A classy midfielder trying to bring his team. Rolls down the seven goal margin between Princeton and Syracuse. Mulligan with the kick save, the outlet pass picked off. That's never say die for Josh Sims, the hustle. One, three, two. Teams need strength now. Strebel, not a factor today. They've done a great job of really just cutting Strebel away from or off of the uh, effective passing lanes. Latzel has done that to Strebel two games in a row, the regular season game, and now this national championship game. Burns playing defense. Artopoulos tries to force it to Tierney. Sims picks it up. He likes room. Let's see if he takes it on himself. He's got Stetson, a nice matchup. They're looking to double. Burns just stays there to double him. Here comes another double. He's got three guys playing him. He gives up to Strebel, and Strebel finds the net. Beautiful job by Josh Sims. First double team, then triple team. Finally, he just turns and finds his 
Attackman Strebel. And he gunned that ball to Strebel. That's a look at Sims with the assist. Strebel with the goal. Sims will draw a crowd. Stesson, and then you'll see Marshall Abrams step up for the double. Right there. He's double teamed. He looks away. Watch him gun this ball across the face of the field. Head up the whole time. And on the line, Strebel catches that beautiful assist by Josh Sims. Sensing the double team. Looked away and found his teammate Matt Strebel for the goal. Syracuse winning 14 of 21 faceoffs. Tremendous job. Bassett, we've seen it all day long. Teams have watched him do it all day long. They watch tape, as you mentioned, Quint. They know what he's going to do. They can't stop him. And with Searcy and Bassett working that possession, very tough to follow up on a goal like Princeton just scored with another possession because Syracuse just gets it back with Searcy. What is the weakness of the Syracuse team? Not much you can look at on paper, that's for sure. They had a mental breakdown earlier in the season. They lost to Cornell. Dave Petromala doing a nice job at Cornell. But Syracuse had played a game earlier that weekend. They played Cornell on Tuesday, and they lost to the building Cornell program, mentally not ready. If the, that might be the only Achilles heel, if that is one. They had beaten Loyola on a Friday night where they played a terrific fourth quarter. They bust across town to Ithaca, New York. And Petromala and his young squad ambushed the Orange. Other than that, it's been a perfect season for Syracuse. This might have been Ryan Powell's next point, but they couldn't get the ball up cleanly. He was parked on the goalie's right, waiting for the ball. And they couldn't get it cleanly, Quinn. It was a broken clear. Ryan was waiting for the guy to pick it up, anybody to pick it up, and feed him. He would have had a one-on-one -on -one with Tierney. They could not get the ball off the ground. Winship Ross come up with the ball on that one, and he lost the glove. That's why the whistle blew. The junior Winship Ross showing some courage. Sticks were flying. The bodies were flying also. Things getting a bit chippy here with a six-goal margin. Trevor Tierney proving that he is one of the best with his performance on this championship weekend. Mulligan combo, combo. on the championship team equally as strong today. What a field general Mulligan has been when he's really been barking out and positioning his guys perfectly today. Strategically, very impressive. Syracuse, they've been burnt by three unassisted goals, but otherwise, they really look like they're solid in their con concepts as far as who they're going to double, who they're not going to double, and they're clearing. With guys like Abrams and Glatzel, they get the ball off the ground, and they get the ball up the field efficiently without many mistakes. Smith on the clear. See if Syracuse is anxious to even get any more. Or they don't need any more. Six goal lead with 220 left. Lee Felsmo, Quinn Kessenick, ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA Lacrosse Championships. The whole weekend, and here we are with the championship game. Syracuse playing some reserve players, but Powell's still in the game. He's on the crease being shadowed by Damian Davis. So Syracuse now with a full substitute. They've got five subs in the game, but Powell remains to try to tie his brother's record. Out of the box. Inside of two minutes, they step out of that box, and that will give possession to the other team. And of course, interested bystander Casey Powell right there. The all-time leading scorer for Syracuse, the guy who did it with more flair than anybody before him, watching his brother challenge his record. Meanwhile, Sims again for Princeton, getting it done on that end of the field. Look at that, 36th goal of the season for Sims. A terrific career coming to an end for Josh Sims with that goal. It's, his career started as a freshman in the finals. They won two national championships his freshman and sophomore year. Last year he had to watch the finals, but he's back. 3.5 grade point average in economics. He received the highest, the Roper Award at Princeton, which is the highest academic and athletic achievement you can receive. Casey Powell enjoying his team's success. We'll come back for the final moments of the Syracuse Championship. a true work of art at Dockside.
This is a public notice. Apple Chevrolet Oldsmobile is conducting a 45-day test market volume selling pricing program that can literally save you thousands. Every new Apple Chevrolet and Oldsmobile will be clearly marked with Apple's absolute lowest price. No hassling, no haggling. The super low price you see, you get. Plus, with these great incentives, Apple saves you even more. So come take advantage of this tremendous buying opportunity at Apple Chevrolet Oldsmobile in Riverhead. Syracuse breaking out of their huddle. Lee Falls going quick casting, bringing you the final moments of a Syracuse championship over a Princeton team that came to challenge after beating the defending champion. But this was 1995, Syracuse against an unbelievable Maryland team. Syracuse with a spurt in the late stages of the second quarter. Casey Powell right there, beating the great Brian Doherty. Syracuse wins that game, 1995 champions. And it's been five years, but no double-decker double sandwich today. The sandwich, of course, is if you are in between a class that gets a ring, a championship ring, you don't want to be a sandwich player at Syracuse. There are two graduating classes that have been sandwiched. And this would have been a double not to happen. Ryan Powell will get his wish, along with the other seniors, Matt and Hione, and others. Facing off, Syracuse can't get it cleanly. Syracuse trying to get the possession. Illegal procedure on Princeton. The ball will go back to Syracuse. So they've got 143 left. Ryan Powell still parked behind his brother. And I think that's where he's going to stay. Or is he on the field? Is he on the crease? He's on the crease. Still on the field, being shadowed by Damian Davis. Damian Davis does not want to be in the record book as the guy who gave that all-time record. Trying to push it into him, and Ryan could not collect it. Davis checks it, goes to Trevor Tierney. Princeton trying to clear the ball with Rod Gifford. Maragi, the ball gets down around the midfield area. Big time hits. Syracuse coming up with Brett Walther just throwing the lumber. Timeout Princeton. Well, the March, the Memorial Day magic for Princeton comes to a... We'll come back with our final moments of the fourth quarter. Stay with us. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You gotta eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Back at College Park, 12-7, Syracuse comfortably aware that they will be this year's champion. And, of course, the only thing in question now is, will Casey Powell be the all-time leading scorer? This is the fourth Powell right in front of him. Uh, Ryan, the second. The next one will be enrolled there next year, number three. But they're all chasing Casey Powell, who now is the all-time leading scorer. Ryan right behind him. Look at that. One point separates. And Ryan had to play with him in his shadow the first two years. So you got to credit this family with an incredible work, that work ethic. Casey with the flair. Ryan with the get-it-done attitude a little bit more. And now Princeton after the timeout. Let's see if they set up anything for the offense. Challenge Mulligan. And a 1-4-1. Syracuse extending. Goalie pulled. Now they're not pulled goalie. They're way up high, but they're not pulled the goalie. Back side of the net, that one does not go in. New goalie in the game. A lot of fresh faces for Princeton. Give them a chance to experience this championship weekend at Bird Stadium. It's such a special atmosphere. Get it tight. Got to 
looking at your scorecard now, folks. Joe Russell behind. Ryan Powell. Inside, he gets the assist to tie his brother. The only thing in doubt has been answered, and he'll just as soon leave it there. He tied Casey for the all-time leading score in Syracuse history. He did it with 18 seconds left, and the crowd of players in support of Ryan Powell yes. cannot believe it that they would leave it right there, Q. Leave them tied. The brothers, as close as you can get, they are locked together for life. Powell sprints off the field, embraces his fellow seniors. They will walk university with a ring, a resounding 13-7 victory. They get the ball off the field now. The referees have tossed that ball, and they're going to hand it to Ryan Powell. What a career, what a year. He put the pressure on himself. He averaged six points plus a game, and that's when he faced the best defender on everybody's team the whole year. Ryan Powell had to do it week in and week out, and he did. He answered the call. Syracuse. So he takes the tie with his brother. That's all he wanted. And I think if he had a chance to score another one, Quint, I think he turned it down. What a great moment for him. And you see Casey Powell. A little bit emotional on the sideline. Looking for his brother. Casey could not get it done his senior year. Didn't get a chance. A tremendous player. He lost in the semifinals to this team. But today, here is the record. Tying assist. Tic-tac-toe. Princeton substituting the goalie. The reaction from the Syracuse bench and crowd heartwarming as Ryan Powell sprinted off the field. What a great moment. AC getting a chance to watch it. The second winding now. Now it's time for a team celebration. Coyote launches the ball, and here come the Syracuse Orangemen. Credit Princeton for beating the defending champions again here, but the Syracuse Syracuse Orangemen have won seven, and the brothers are locked together, tied as the all-time leaders in scoring history at Syracuse. What a moment for Syracuse, the Powell brothers, and the legacy of Syracuse lacrosse. Ryan Powell, the little bro that followed Casey from Carthage to Syracuse. He had to score six points in this game to get there, and he came up big. Head, heart, and hustle, the motto for the Syracuse lacrosse team. All three traits exhibited today. A smart, as well coached a Syracuse team as I have ever seen. The hustle there with the ground ball play. These seniors sensed it, and they got it done. Pal Power. The legacy of Syracuse continues. You go back to the Cots years, the early 80s when it started in 83. Cut seven championships for the exciting electric Syracuse Orangemen. Just as Tierney changed the game on the defensive end, the Syracuse Orangemen have changed the game and maintained an atmosphere of electricity for offensive play. Memorial Day magic comes to an end for this Princeton squad. Coming in 5-0 in title games, five championships in the 90s. They will be back. Bill Tierney and Princeton, they have a young team. Mulligan and Ryan Powell. Mulligan. No sandwich team here. They're getting the hardware. They're getting the ring. Everybody taking their turns congratulating Ryan Powell, without question, the player of the year. Without question. Take a look at what happened moments ago after the game ending was not in doubt. Watch Casey, watch his brother tie him. All-time record, 287 points for a career at Syracuse. The Powell brothers writing themselves into the history books. A very special moment for the program and for the family. Syracuse now cutting down the nets. Each senior will take a piece. 
And this will be the moment they'll remember forever. Syracuse coming out, doing what they've had to do week in and week out. And they beat a Princeton team that has a legacy as deep as theirs. Tremendous job for Tierney and Princeton to get here. Syracuse took care of business, and they get the championship for year 2000. For Quick Kesnick, I'm Lee Felsmo from College Park. The final once again, Syracuse 13 and Princeton 7. So the Princeton Tigers came in here expecting and hoping for a miracle. Wearing the jerseys they wore in 1992. Ryan Powell came up big. Liam Banks with a game of his life. The defense so strong and so consistent, so consistent, bursting the bubble of the hopes of Tierney and the defense of Syracuse. The heroes for Princeton, not to be enough today. Josh Sims trying to do it on his own and the defense coming up huge time after time. The final would be Syracuse 13, Princeton 7. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com, a part of Go Network, go.com.